we all set? Great. Being uh, 6.30, um, we'll open the, uh, the meeting. Oops, what have, is this mine, Joe? Uh, it can be. No. Yeah. Uh, can I call the meeting to order? Um, can I have an acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. First, start off by saying welcome to the community beach harbor building or whatever, or formerly known as Pier 44. Beautiful space. Great job restoring it. And uh, I forgot how big it was. <coughs> it's a very, very, very big building. So, and in the upcoming meetings, we'll be discussing, you know, some possible options for this building. But it's nice to have the meeting here. Trish, thanks for getting us out and giving us a view of the ocean. Um, uh, second uh, item, which is septuagenta and their walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins? Seeing none, we'll move on to number three. Meet the applicants. Um, Beautification Commission. That is uh, Ms. Musto. She's not here. And then Constable uh, Michael Chevrolet. Come on up, sir. How are you? Good evening. If you can just say your name and your address. Uh, Michael Chevry, 26 Minot Light Ave. Right. And you are here to get a license to be a constable in the town of Situ? Yes. Great. Just give us a little bit of background on yourself. Sure. Um, I was a deputy sheriff for about 10 years. Um, before that, um, I went to uh, Massachusetts American Academy. Um, Going back forward with the Sheriff's Department, I worked with the uh, civil process and uh, got a case for uh, what a hospital has to do and carry out the community, and uh, this is the reason why I'm uh, here tonight. Um, I also work with uh, FEMA, so working with the, uh, the communities in, in some kind of a crisis and dealing with people with uh, sometimes uh, interesting situations is uh, not unusual. I'm used to dealing with that. Um, I do have a security clearance. Uh, background check, so uh, that's uh, really uh, helpful. Uh, I do have a business up and running right now um, as a process server, so this is something that's going to add to that business and uh, help me take it to the next level and move it forward. Just, are you a constable in any other towns? Not right now. So this is your first it would be. get your people. Great. Any questions from the board? Just comments on the letter that we got from the attorney, the local attorney, could use the services. Great. Attorney Lauren, great. There's no other questions. Can I have a motion? Um, we're doing the appointments later on. Oh, that's right. We're doing this. Right. Good point. So what we'll do is we'll think about it for the next 14 items and we'll vote on it. I think it's number 14 or 15 that we're actually um, four months with it. Um, so you can stay for a couple hours and watch it or you can... Actually, we're not live tonight. I don't know. You can call, if you call Sheila tomorrow at, uh, at Town Hall, she'll uh, let you know. Okay. Looks pretty good. Thank you. Move on to uh, number four. Um, Mark, are we? Okay, so number four is going to be postponed. Yes, till the 27th. Till the 27th. Moving along. All right. We've done before, before the buffet. Um, <laughs> brain layers license, article number five. Is um, John Cook here? John Cook? How do you want to handle this? Do you want to receive it? Does anyone know Mr. Cook? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I believe this is a renewal. Okay. A renewal or a new license? Renewal. It's a renewal. Actually, we know it. I mean, my. I don't know. It's new. Any issues, <laughs> Mr. Banger, with? With him in the past? Uh, he has worked with us in the past and has uh, met all the requirements uh, to obtain his license today. I'm not sure uh, if he thought he should be here or not. Okay. Motion, Jim? Yes. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew uh, the drain layer license of John F. Cook, Jr., 615 Pleasant Street, Women's Madison, 289. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Moving on. Ms. Busto. 
why don't you come up? We'll go back to item number um, three, which is meet the uh, applicants. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? Good you want a second to uh, compose yourself, or are you go you're ready to go? I'm ready to go. Hey, have a seat. If you can just give your name and address. Uh, Shirley Musto, 111 Glades Road, uh, Citrus. Great. And just a little bit about, we read your, your application, why you want to be on the Beaver mm -hmm. Committee. Uh, well, uh, I've always enjoyed being around uh, flowers, and I did go to uh, one of the meetings. Uh, it was a station, and I really enjoyed it. I do have uh, quite a bit of knowledge from being in the flower business and owning my own flower shop for over 30 years. And I uh, also have different degrees for design and pesticides and the agricultural. So I have um, quite a bit of knowledge. Great. I know they are looking for hands. So any comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I've known Shirley Shirley served on the Conservation Commission on the Commission with Disabilities, among others. Uh, she's correctly stated her background uh, in flowers, with the flower shop she owned for 30 years, so I personally have no problem. Sure. Okay. As I said earlier, I think item number 15, we're actually um, awarding the, the position, so if you want to hang out for a couple hours, you can watch town government and its work, or you can call Sheila in the morning and she'll tell you. Okay. okay, we'll move on to number six, which is a one day uh, wine and malt beverages license. Um, I saw Esther Blacker walk in, so why don't we have her go first? She's in the Oh, nice. Hi. Hi, Esther. How are you? Hi. Hi. Um, this is the 15th year of Joshua's run, and so we'd like to have a big celebration afterwards after the race and it's at St. Mary's Parish Center and um, all the money's raised, the pro all the proceeds go to the Jimmy Fund. So we hope you can all make it. <laughs> and the day is? It's October 22nd. Great. And when does it start? It starts, so all the races start around 8. Registration and all that gets going and then the, um, the end of the five mile is usually around 11 o'clock. We head inside. Start. And you're going to go into the Paris Center. Into the Paris right. Center. Right. Now, just for those thousands of people watching us, there's different <laughs> levels of participation, right? There's right. walkers. Yep. There's there's walkers. There's a kids fun run at 8:30. There's a two mile walk and fun run, um, which is beautiful, all up along Second Cliff and First Cliff. And then the five mile goes around Second Cliff and out to uh, Third Cliff. And it's beautiful. Lots of positive comments. The town's been fantastic over the years. Um, so. Great. Any uh, comments from the board? This is this is truly one of the great weekends and great events that the town does. So I, I urge your participation. There's hundreds of kids that do the run, and everyone's buzzing about it all day long on the soccer field. So it's really a great event. Get out there if you can and participate. Um, or you can probably just go to the uh, party afterwards at 11. Yep, that's, that's fine the, too. Yeah. 11 to 4. So again, <laughs> it is um, October 22nd from 11 to 4 at um, the Bear Center is when the license will be. And the event starts at 8.30 that morning. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Esther. Motion. Motion, Mr. Murray? Move the board select and vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverages liquor license to Joshua's run for the Jimmy Fund, St. Mary of the Nativity Parrot Center on Saturday, October 22, 2011, during the hour of 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Daniel. All in favor? Aye. 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 All in vote? It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Good night. So uh, the night has been postponed? Yes. Okay, moving right along. Um, number seven is the uh, discussion vote on a liquor license for the Backyard Burger Bar. And uh, for those of you that weren't here, we discussed this at our last meeting. There were a couple of things that had to get resolved, and here we are again. How are you? Good. So um, 
I think what we wanted to do is give a, a little period of time to see if we got any feedback or, or any uh, anything from the neighbors and stuff. And I don't know, is anyone in the audience here to discuss um, establishment? Uh, great. One second, man. Um, anything from the board before we go to the audience? Just, we, we do have a letter, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know what? They're not going to be able to hear you. Can you? Actually, you know what? Right here. Oh, there we go. There you go. Her bell. Yes, I'm Kathy Chason and my husband Greg Chason. We live at 10 Fort Place, longtime residents of, of Situate and Fort Place. And uh, Bob has uh, been keeping us informed about the changes and so forth. So we're really just here because we're interested in a little concern that it is changing from uh, a paint store to a restaurant pub and uh, concerned about noise and the fact that there will be a liquor license. So anyway, we're here to listen and um, learn. Thank you. Great. Uh, Mr. Danny, maybe you'll speak this better, but it, it is zoned in that area for uh, it's a business. It's a business district, so it can, it can go in there. In terms of noise, you guys can speak, it's going to be enclosed. Um, there's no entertainment license at this point in time. It's just a restaurant and uh, with a bar in, inside of it. Um, hopefully, it'll be very active. And uh, uh, you know, but the hours of operation. Nine a week. Kitchens are closed down at nine. All weekends, the kitchens closing at ten. Right. So the kitchens closing at nine and, and ten. And, ten. and when will what are the hours of operation till eleven? Or? Um, I'd say everybody's out of school by eleven o'clock at night. Okay. On weekends. Just what I, what I think of it. So the liquor license would run till 11 o'clock. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And as. Wait. Mr. Mark, just a, I'm a little confused. John said something different from what Joe said. Are you asking for a license till 10 o'clock during the week and then 11 o'clock on the weekends or 11 o'clock straight? I think she said the kitchen. The kitchen's going to close at 9 during the week and 10 on the week on weekends. But if I have someone walk in at 5 or 9, I'm not going to not need to serve them. Absolutely. So I'd want to, you know, cook for them if they want to have a cocktail. So I'm not saying no. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'd say 11 o'clock during I'm the I'm not week. questioning at all your timing. I just kind of want to know what oh, I'm voting yeah. on. That's all. I want to know what, what the times, what the requested times are. Because we don't, we don't vote on kitchen hours. We just vote on liquor sure. license hours, right? So maybe it's not true. Yeah, so do you want just to clarify? the board, you know, 10 of, um, Sunday, I don't plan on being in there until 11 o'clock at night. I want everybody out of there, you know. I want to be out of there by 9 o'clock in Sunday. Sure. I'm going to let you turn around for a second, and I'm going to take a, uh, oh, okay. just so you can communicate with your partners and stuff. Yes, sir. Please I speak please. loud enough, you don't need that. <laughs> um, I'm Jack McGinnis. I live in Stockbridge Road, and I'm here to encourage the town. Uh, I think this is fantastic. Someone's looking to open a business today instead of closing one. The building's closed, we're losing revenue there. You know, the town obviously needs revenue. This is seems to be a great fit, great place, great spot. You know, don't let more people go. That's that's my only encouragement is the town needs a revenue. The town needs a, you know, it, it, it fit in the town anyway. But I mean, we just, you know, they're, they're looking to do something and they're willing to stay in situ instead of going or or Marshfield or something, but I think it's a fantastic idea. And I can't see noise being a problem. Okay. You know, I mean, I've never had burgers that got fired up afterwards. So, <laughs> so you know, so my, my suggestion would be... I say 11 o'clock, I can get it for a woman. And the, that was my suggestion was going to be, just be keep great. it clean, 11 o'clock. <laughs> that covers all your bases. Yeah. And I, and I, that's my gut feeling on this, but I just wanted to bring that up as a discussion. Any other discussion? Uh, I'll read them. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Once, unless you want to show them. No, no, go ahead. And, uh, just before you go ahead. ask, I'm just going to comment. That just two weeks ago, that was my only concern with the neighbors, and there weren't any neighbors there. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it doesn't sound like Mrs. Chase on is really against it, but just kind of getting educated. You know, maybe maybe they're far, but your, your situation will be a lot like the flip of shit. You know, mm -hmm. you're gonna have, you know, maybe right next door. Well, be respectful of the uh, and, and you guys do. I mean, yeah. we couldn't ask for like I couldn't agree with more with what Jack said. Couldn't you kind of, and we're lucky to have you guys in to run a you know fantastic operation every every other one you do. Uh, just be conscientious of your neighbors and so close. Talk to them. As you know, as we see for um, the dog watch, they do come in there, and, right. you know, that's taken into consideration every year when the license is renewed. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so we'll be 11 a.m.? Yep. 11 a.m. to 11 p.m.? Mm -hmm. 11 to 11? Yes. And Sunday 12. Yep. Okay. Let me just deal with okay. one other issue yeah, before no, I just wanted to know. Um, as Joe mentioned, we do, the one of the concern with this was the betterment from the sewer in the change of the establishment from a paint store to a liquor store, excuse me, a restaurant, the capacity use of the sewer system and the bylaws in the town say that a betterment has to be assessed for the change of use. And that was discussed, a letter was written from Al Banger, the DPW, to you, and um, and that was our concern that that, was, that that wasn't gonna be an issue. And we have a letter here from Mr. Berwick saying uh, that that is not an issue, you accept the betterment fee and you will pay it, you want it amortized over 20 years, which Mr. Banger, I assume that's an option. Right, so that has been, um, you know, resolved. Right, mm -hmm. and really that has nothing to do with you other than mm -hmm. your rent being gone. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> great. Any other discussion? No. No. Yep. Yes, Mr. Mark. Move the board selectmen vote to grant a common victuals all kinds of alcoholic beverages license to 17 New Driftway Inc. doing business as Backyard Burger Bar for a 2,500 square foot first floor dining room with one front entrance and exit, one left exit and one rear exit for the hours of 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday and from 12 noon to 11 p.m. on Sunday and subject to successful inspections by the Building Department, Board of Health and Fire Department. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good when's your open, just for again those thousands of people watching, when's your intended opening date? Hopefully the last week in November, first week of December. Great. We'll see you then. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to item number eight, which is a discussion vote to award a contract for sewer lateral repair. Mr. Banger. Thank you. Thank you. This is a uh, topic to award a contract for sewer lateral repair. Sewer laterals are those with those sections of the sewer which go from the uh, sewer main in the street uh, through town property and into an individual's property. Um, this is a contract that is that exceeds the town administrator's uh, uh, signing uh, contract signing level, and so therefore needs to come before you. Uh, we duly went out and uh, solicited bids, received three responses. Um, the low response is silver lining of Needham for $97,350.50. Uh, they are a responsible bidder. They, in fact, have been doing our work in the past, and we would recommend that you award this contract to this lowest qualified bidder. Yes, Sean. Al, will this be for, like, in place anytime we need it, or is it, is it site specific? Um, through TV inspection work, uh, we've determined uh, where we have laterals that are leaking groundwater into the sewer system, okay. and so what they're they are assigned they are assigned then specific locations to go in and and uh, dig up the sewer and dig up and they get access to the lateral, mm -hmm. and then they insert a, a, a bladder and into the lateral and they expand it and, and basically line the pipe from the inside out. So is this job is it for specific you know streets or is it in place for the next three years when we need to have these no, it's in, lines. Right, it's in place for the next three years. Okay. Uh, we're awarding it, you would be awarding it on a unit cost basis, so it's uh, how many feet they do. Um, for purposes of the bid, we, we came up with a hypothetical, this many feet, this many mobilizations, what would you want? And then we compared those three bids. This one offers the lowest per unit price. Excellent. Right. And their work is well done. That's even better. Uh, Mr. Murray. So Al, this is for the uh, this is for the laterals, which run from the main to the house. Yes. Now, 
when I just renovated my house four years ago, I paid for those laterals. And so is the town now paying for fixing a lateral that's on private property? That's a good question. Which, by the way, just for the record, I'm fine with because if it need be, because it's saving the town right. money in the long run. But I just want to be clear as to what's going on here in terms of we're, we're, we're moving down a path work. to uh, make that determination. Okay. Uh, thus far, on some of the laterals, basically, until we get into the lateral, we're not sure where the leak will be, okay, whether the leak is on town property or on the residence property. We own the ladder up to uh, two feet into the uh, homeowner's property. Yep. And then, as you pointed out, you connect it from there on up to your home as, as everyone has. So this is a program whereby we're identifying the contractor who will do the work. We're still having some discussions with the town administrator about uh, where do we uh, should we be doing this uh, repairs on the home portion by uh, reimbursement from the homeowner, partial reimbursement from the homeowner, or by a, a town cost? Okay, so and this is just discussion we'll bring to you a next. Okay, so this is just to identify where the leak may be. It does not. No, this is to award. The, this is to get the person to begin to do the work, and the ones we already know we have to fix that are on town. That okay. Yeah. So this will actually fix. We will be fixing. Yeah. On private property. Well, we would have to go onto private property many times to fix even the public property portion of it. Yeah, okay. So uh, you're, the question you're asking is not the one that I'm prepared to address fully today because yep. the town administrator, and we haven't worked out the details of what we're going to suggest. Okay. Uh, this is simply to uh, get this contractor on board, award this contract, and then we're doing it. And we assign them specific areas to go to. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And until we resolve that question, we're not going to be doing it on private property. Okay. Okay. Does this, um, so I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, is this for projects that have already been identified and that's why I came up with a number of this contract to, to fix a, a specified number if you don't know on that? Okay. Um, on, pro on contracts such as this, where you're going to do it on a uh, per linear foot basis, all right, you, you need to, uh, and, and where there's uh, to do a five-foot section or to do a 20-foot section uh, or to mobilize and come out to do any section. All of those are different piece elements of cost, okay? So, for instance, to do a five-foot section, sometimes it's just as expensive to get there, to dig the hole, and do the five-foot section as might be a 10-foot section. So what we do is we come up with a hypothetical menu of what you're going to do in this project, and then they did some total, so much for this, so many dollars per foot for this, so many dollars for mobilization for that, okay? That's added up to come up with the contract value, gotcha. okay? But when they do the work, they're going to do it on a per foot basis. How many, just that, based on what you've seen so far in the department of understand, <coughs> how many need to be fixed at this point in time? That you're um, it's, all of, I would say on Lighthouse Point, all of them. Okay. And we are looking at an alternative there, which is maybe we don't do cast in place. Maybe we don't do this repair. We actually look at uh, wholesale replacement. We have wholesale replacement of the water lines are necessary down there. Our sewer mains are okay, but all the laterals are uh, just soak up the rain and soak up the high tides. So, and the reason this whole area is important is because our sewer capacity. Uh, our sewer customers provide 800,000 gallons a day of raw material to us. Um, our capacity is twice that, but on rainy seasons, our inflow is four times that. So when, when it rains or we uh, have high groundwater, we're processing a lot of groundwater, which prevents us from further expansions to the sewer someday in the future. So we're trying to, this is the cheapest way to build new sewer capacity by eliminating leaks. Great, if not, can motion. I have a motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for, quote, cast in place in the, quote, sewer pipe lift lining for the unit price as specified in the bid response received from August 31st, 2011 <coughs> to Silver Lining Holding Corporation of Needham Heights, Massachusetts for the period of September 2011 through June 2012 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion.
Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. I'd like to say was that this is all paid for by the sewer enterprise. Yes. Okay. And you can stay right there because number nine yep. is yours as well. <clears throat> this is a uh, discussion vote for the uh, CMAS contract. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> As you remember, we closed the driftway landfill, uh, opened the transfer station, and signed a contract with a company called CMAS in the early 2000s to haul away and dispose of what we call our blue bag or municipal solid waste. Uh, CMAS uh, is an EPA-approved trashed energy burner <coughs> located in Wareham, and their main business is to supply electrical uh, energy uh, to the utility companies under contract. So in order to be successful doing that, they must secure a steady supply of their fuel so they can generate the electricity that they've contracted to produce. So over the last nine months, um, under instructions from the town administrator, we have uh, been negotiating with CMAS to reduce, uh, to look at how we could reduce the town's cost of disposing of this waste. Um, currently, we pay $95.50 per ton of blue bags that are that are shipped under contract to CMAS, and that contract runs through the year uh, 2018, which is another, what's that, six years. Um, through negotiations, they've agreed to reduce our costs significantly by 9%. They're going to reduce the hauling and disposal costs by $8.15 per ton, or, or 9%, if we agree to extend our contract by five more years to the year of June uh, 2023. This change will save the transfer station members $29,000 in the next 12 months, and over this 12-year contract is worth uh, $400,000 to us. So it's a good contract, uh, but what we're going to do is make sure that we weren't locking into something that uh, there may be a better alternative out there. So we looked at several other alternatives, including uh, canceling the CMAS contract and shifting the business to the Bourne Landfill. And while we could achieve some savings by doing this, it falls short of uh, what CMAS has to offer uh, for a couple reasons. One is that CMAS's price is, uh, is better. It's better than the Bourne price when you consider the cost of hauling. Um, it would save us about $4,000 uh, versus uh, going to Bourne. Uh, secondly, and more importantly, Bourne was unwilling to commit to a fixed long-term contract. So really, it was a one or two year arrangement. We might have saved some money, but then where are we? And thirdly, if we cancel the CMAS contract, which has another six years to run, we would be facing um, some legal costs, if you will, to avoid substantiated liquidated damages because we're canceling or defaulting on the contract. And, and fourthly, I guess, is that a consideration is that CMAS is actually environmentally more responsible uh, alternative for us because CMAS, uh, being an EPA-approved trash burner, uh, trash to energy burner uh, with scrubbers and all that uh, is a, a responsible place to produce energy versus putting the material into a landfill which is an end game that has an end at some point and, and then will be stuck. So we feel really good about uh, the CMAS alternative. Uh, we feel even better about the fact that we can save $400,000 over the course of this contract and I guess we feel pretty good about that we've, we've got a plan that will last us a few years and we don't have to keep having these meetings and negotiations. So. At this point, I recommend that you agree to amend the CMAS contract for the lower price and the longer term. Just, uh, just, just one addition. Um, you held them on the fuel surcharge that they tried to charge you? Yeah, we got out of that entirely. It was a math error on their part. What they're doing basically is um, if the price of fuel goes up five cents, uh, then the price of the ton would go up five cents. And we, using the math that we've discussed earlier, that's more than equitable. Right. Okay. And we couldn't hold them to the 87.35. No. Yeah, I mean, if no, it's, the it's, way I look at it is if fuel went up, um, if fuel doubled from four bucks to eight bucks, then it would add four more dollars to our ton price, well, which isn't that. isn't going to kill us. They've already cut eight and a half, eight eight dollars off to start with, so you know, doubled over time, we're still <coughs> well ahead, I think. Yeah, but in, at the end of the contract, we'll be paying 114.61 per ton. Yes, yes, it goes up, there's, based upon CPI. Right. But there's a limiter on the CPI, it can't go up too high. Okay. okay. Right. <coughs> yes, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. I did want to bring up the fact, I don't want it to be lost here, that, that uh, this is 
another example, I think, of, of how uh, the town administrator, and in this case the DPWL, uh, have looked at a situation and tried to figure out how <coughs> we could, it could be done cheaper. Uh, the result is, as we just heard, $400,000 cheaper over the life of the contract. And that's $400,000 that, that we won't be looking for seven years from now or eight years from now. Uh, <coughs> it's money that will go both to the school and to the, to the town side of government. And, and it's just, an, I guess I'll say, another example of, of uh, it working very, very well and the, the, the financial results are becoming very obvious. So I think both town administrator and you and other department heads also who, who uh, have partaken in other programs. We're just starting to show. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harris, I just was going to add, and it's there aren't, these, these plants aren't on every street corner like we know. So it's, they don't have a monopoly, but they, they certainly, the next nearest one is in Millbury, Mass. Which is, uh, thank you, Al. Patricia. Um, one other, quick, just a quick question now. They, there's a, uh, um, cause in the contract if the rate goes up, what if gas goes down? Uh, then it's hell. There's no, if it goes up and there's a fuel surcharge and it goes down, it goes, the fuel surcharge goes down. But if, if gas but goes down 20 cents a gallon, does the rate go down? No, 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 there is not. It doesn't do that. Uh, it's a, they, they pegged it at $4.10 a gallon for diesel fuel. Um, diesel fuel may, may not drop below that. I guess we didn't anticipate that. So we didn't. So Tony, um, just a couple of things. Um, the reason that we were able to renegotiate this contract is because it wasn't properly executed. It's exactly like the Constellation Energy one. So um, when they got the same letter from me as Constellation did, we immediately met with them and their position was exactly the same as Constellation's. We litigate, you know, deep pocket, corporation, whatever. So um, what they did is they came to us and, and proposed an extended term for the contract in exchange for uh, renegotiating the price. Al uh, ran with um, some guidance from me after we had two meetings, but I, I want you to know that it wasn't just Al and I sort of doing this. We engaged an attorney who specializes <coughs> in landfills. He's actually probably one of the preeminent attorneys in the Commonwealth who does landfill uh, leases, landfill, solid waste negotiations and he helped us counter during the whole process and also assure us that extending the term of the agreement out wasn't something that the town was going to be get caught short with later because it was an extended term. So I just want to assure you that it was reviewed by um, a special counsel um, to move forward with this and he's endorsed the thing that you see tonight. Okay. One, one more thing yes. I feel good about it with this is that, that uh, the $29,000 that we'll be saving in the coming year equates to about $6 per transfer station member in savings. Now, I'm not advocating a rate reduction, but nonetheless, it certainly does help us hold the cost of the transfer station in line uh, and, uh, and, and build positive reserves so that we can afford to replace the equipment without going into the deep debt we've had to in the past, taking money from the town for that. So, well, and Al, excuse me, Al will say that. I might not necessarily have that in my FY13 budget in terms of giving relief to taxpayers who are funding a deficit in that transfer station. And this is showing that the changes that we've made over the last three years and now this, um, at a minimum, perhaps can reduce the general fund appropriation for the landfill capping. That's 100000 off the top of our shared revenues every year. So it's clearly my anticipation at this point, bearing any unforeseen circumstances, to see if we can give a little relief to our taxpayers based on renegotiating this agreement. So. I think we can all agree that it's positive. Where, where, where it ends up in the wash, we'll, we'll figure that out on another day. Yes? My, only, uh, my question to that, Al, is um, the fuel surcharge. Where are you basing that off of? What, what, what fuel surcharge charts are they using? Are they using the U.S. government charts? And if the fuel goes down, you don't get any more off. Yeah, that's from what yeah. my understanding is part of the contract. I don't know what the what the matrix is that it's based on. The, the index that it is. Yeah, you need but to make sure that it's based on. Yeah, it is. It's based yeah. upon a very specific. Uh, it's called all diesel. Uh, <coughs> that's New England. All diesel New England index. Yeah, it's based but on. Uh, yeah, we well, don't. I get a government index every week, yeah. so I, I. That's why I ask. Uh, that is available on the email. We yeah. Uh, you know, my only question would be just to make sure that the guy isn't budgeting what he's paying. Well, it's, 
based, yeah. Yeah. So it's based on the Massachusetts or New England index. Yeah, so New which England is where it's buying DDI one a number two diesel fuel retail sales by all sellers published by the U.S. Department of Energy at the following website address. Right. And that's calculated monthly. Right. Any other discussion? Okay. If sure. not, a motion. Will the Board of Select propose to amend the service agreement between the Town and the CMAS Partnership LLC of West Wareham, Massachusetts for the hauling and disposing of municipal solid waste at a reduced rate of $87.35. This Fourth Amendment shall commence on January 1, 2012 and terminate on June 30, 2023. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Again, I'd just like to comment, Al, these briefs are wonderful. Gets us up to speed very quickly. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. So it's unanimous. Thank you, Al. Um, number 10, street acceptance. You can stay right up there. Actually, Mr. Chair, yes. number 10 is a public hearing call for 740. Oh, you're right. Good oh, point. What time is it? 710. We're being so efficient. We're a tad ahead of schedule. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's move on. We'll come back to that. Um, Sorry, Al. <laughs> you wanna, uh, we move on to number 11. Town owned property habitat for many. Switch lane here. No? Any idea if he's coming? Yeah. So he thought it would be after the 745. Okay. So we'll wait on that also. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll do a quick one and then we'll come back and we can. Um, Want to do number 15? Or well, that's just an announcement. Do sure. 12. Oh, uh, we could do number 12 because that's not actually the warrant. It's just looking for. So why don't we? Why don't we go to number 12? While Rich gets himself settled, you can come on up, Rich. Um, <coughs> move that the board of selectmen votes open and close the town special meeting warrant for Tuesday, October 25th, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. So we're opening it now and we're closing at the end of the meeting? Yep. Quick. And obviously... Can you put the time that I... You know, the, time, the time that you open it and the time to close it? Um, it's up to you. It's not uh, I'll, I'll current. The motion that is. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. And we'll be discussing all the articles forthcoming. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. So we will go back to number 11 which is discussion of the town owned property for Habitat for Humanity. Which way is there? Perfect timing. Um, let me just give one, for one second. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, you were here with us probably three or four weeks ago. Yep. And we discussed a, uh, a piece of property on Hadley Road between Road, Wood Ave. Eli and <coughs> Wood Ave. Yep. And, uh, and we discussed wanting to uh, give the town to donate that to you for another house for Habitat for Humanities. Um, I've discussed it uh, individually with the board and discussed it with Trish, and we're um, trying to get our arms around it. There's, there's a couple of sticky issues on it, and um, one of them has to be, or happens to be, um, town council and getting their opinion on whether RFPs have to go out for um, this type of process. And we haven't got a definitive conclusion from them yet. Um, I know in the past we haven't done this, but we may have been doing it incorrectly um, in the past and we may have to correct it moving forward. Um, so that's one thing that we've got to find out an answer for and, and consider. Also, um, there's some other issues with the property that I'm not sure right now that the consensus of the board is to move forward with that. Um, there's discussion about the Affordable Housing Trust and what their role should be in this. Um, some discussion about the current property that's going on that hasn't been built yet, and then discussion just in, ter in terms of the property itself. Um, so at this point, um, we can both vote on it, or other people can speak as well, but I don't think we're ready to proceed with giving the piece of property to Habitat right now. And Mr. Murray. Regarding number one, which I see is the most important one, is whether legally, regardless of past practice, we can just decide to do this on our own or it needs to go. I guess what, what would be the option to do? Either put out an RFP or something? Yeah, put out an RFP and then anybody. Okay. 
could be. For me, just as part of the discussion, I very much support using the correct process, whatever that correct process may be. I support the proposal for this piece of property for the Habitat House. Um, but we got it from my personal view. Obviously, we have to find out how we would go about doing that, regardless of my personal view is what the board chooses to do anyways or not. Okay. So for me, I, I got we got to figure out what is our piece needed or not. But regarding the other points, I think their um, affordable housing trust I think could play a role. Um, but overall, I applaud the chief for coming before us, finding the piece of property. Uh, one question I do have that, that people have asked me, and if I may ask him, would be what the status is of the other, uh, Road. yeah, the other Habitat for Humanity. Well, you might as well give a, there's one by the high school in Town Hall. There's one that's been built and is now occupied by a town resident, a single father, four children. Yep. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started with the process to do uh, two habitat houses on the Stockbridge Road project. Yep. And during the construction of Widow's Walk, some of the land that was actually on the map indicated as that parcel had been consumed by one of the fairways for the golf course. So the property in size was not as big as it appeared on the town maps. After I came to the board, the board week later entertained the same parcel of land with the affordable housing trust and John Hallen presented an issue. The next meeting the board said, well, why don't you guys work together and see if you can come up with something that would be in conjunction with each other. And we did. There would be one habitat house on a portion of the lot and there would be a duplex on another portion that the affordable housing partnership would be my understanding that it's close to getting started, but there are still some issues being resolved. And nothing has started yet on it other than there is interest from Habitat in the parcel and the housing partnership on the other part. Okay. All right. That's it for me at this point. But I just question. have one question. When you say interest, what do you mean by interest? That we went through the process and the Habitat wants to build a house. In it. Oh, okay. so. It's not interest. You're actually we've given you the land, and you're going yes, to build the house. Yeah. Right. Right. Any other? Yes, Mister. I uh, when Richie first came to me with this idea, I, you know, my, my concern was, uh, you know, do the neighbors know what's you know, happening? The last thing they just want to do is, you know, do something at a meeting, and people are so busy that they, you know, don't tune in, take a long time, know things change while they're at work or at night. Um, We've had a couple of meetings. I have not heard from anyone. But my only concern is if we can go legal. Uh, so, you know, like Rick, I can't, you know, like whether we did it in the past or not, you know, no. we, you know yes. something's brought to our attention. There's some legality Thank to it that has to be addressed first. That's yes. Right. Not long ago, you were perfectly sure understandable. Yep. So that's, that's how I feel you know, right now. So when I found the property, it was had been looked at by the housing partnership three and a half, almost four years ago now. And they didn't choose to do anything for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know. I went over, I looked at it, stood on the corner of the lot and looked over at Eli and looked across to Hadley and saw it was probably one of the more expensive houses in the neighborhood that would be affected by this and that their view was straight across the slot and I went up and I rang the bell and I introduced myself and uh, the couple were very gracious and they said, well, geez, that sounds like a wonderful idea and I said, oh, what can we do to help? I've been to two other neighbors in the area and there isn't any objections that I've been aware of. So, I mean, the last time, one of the preconditions of getting the lot on Stockbridge Road was a directive from the board to go and address the neighbors. And I did that, and 
all their issues were addressed. Any other? Just, just to follow up, and I'm not very redundant, but I think the, the issue we have to, uh, right off the bat, the first issue is to find out the process and, and what process legally we have to go by. And that is both uh, just what everyone on the board has said. You know, it, is, it makes no sense to go forward with any anything only to find out a week from now that we're going to run it wrong. So that, I think, is the first primary thing we have to find out, find out how we have to do it, uh, and go from there. If I may, what's the time frame on hearing back from town council? Well, certainly not for this town meeting. I mean, well, let, just if I could speak a little to the issue. When the town owns land, it just can't convey it to anyone or any group. It has to issue competitive requests for proposals because even though your group has done wonderful work in the town, there are other nonprofits and other groups that provide affordable housing. And that needs to be competitively bid and then a determination made if it's awarded. So that's the problem that arises with the previous conveyances of the land for one sole group that wasn't given an opportunity to be more widely vetted. We've put that question to town council and we're awaiting his feedback as to, um, you know, how we go about that or we can design an RFP with very specific intent since there's already a prior successful project in town and that that would be the overall desire. I mean, the board and the overall goal is to create affordable housing in town. How that's manifesting itself and who constructs it and why, um, those are the things that we don't know for sure yet. There's, uh, yes, sir, on the right. Um, if you could just stand up and sure. ask for John, if you can give him the mic, you could say his name. Uh, a couple points or questions, I guess. Um, oh, you have to say who you are and your address, please. Uh, Tom Anderson, 405 Hadley Road. Um, I have two or three questions. One, um, who would pay the betterment of the sewer coming up the line? And who would pay the connection charge, which is going to be within 24 to 48 months? Uh, number two, I'm not really sure how this works, but <coughs> there's probably three or four lots in that immediate area within a few hundred yards that go up to the neighborhood at 250 to $325,000. And I guess my question is, has the town ever considered just putting the lot for sale for a private person to purchase it? And if that would be the case, that obviously would help our fiscal uh, issue dramatically um, in, in lots of different ways. Uh, number three, I live across the street from that house, and I've spoken with three, three or four neighbors and no one heard of this. So I understand you've probably done due diligence, but uh, of our neighbors, no one's aware of this. So I think there probably needs to be better outreach. Um, so those are kind of my three or four questions. You can answer those. Thank you. I'll try. Um, typically, I think what would happen is for the betterment and sewer connection, they, they would ask for the town to donate that as well. They would ask for the town to donate that as well. Um, so that would be 25000 uh, probably a little less than that, but it'd be fifteen to twenty thousand probably. It's twenty plus okay. Yeah. So sure. they would ask for that. Um, in terms of the, the value of the property, I don't know, but that is certainly something that we take into consideration and have discussed. Um, it's a nice piece of property. I drove there over the weekend. I did speak to two of the neighbors and neither of them knew um, about the, the proposal either. Um, so that's you know, it's an asset of the town. The town would have to decide whether they want to donate, I don't know what the, I have no idea what it's worth, $200,000, you know, just donate that to a Habitat or what we want to keep it as an asset. But just because someone comes before us with a deed for a piece of property doesn't mean that we have to give it to them. You know, knowing that all of us on the record support affordable housing, um, you know, we have to look at all the different angles to see whether this is a piece of property that they want to proceed with. Um, well, did that answer all your questions, or? Um, yeah, I, I just think, you know, when I first walked in, we were talking about fiscal responsibility, and, and I think if, if something were, like, say, 200,000, you know, I absolutely support affordable housing. There's another program within um, that is called Helping Hands that gives money out to all the families, not just one family. So there's lots of ways to do it. Well, I think what, what Rich may say, or other people involved in this is, Fiscal responsibility and affordable housing don't always have direct correlation. You know, in order to get affordable housing, the town has to has to give to it. And when you give, it's 
you know, whether it's a piece of property for fifty thousand or two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand, you know, it's a donation for the town to, to support an interest. Right. Again, and the survey of my neighbors is if you have a choice between two hundred thousand dollars to hire teachers or to, to donate at this time, uh, the donation is not an option. Maybe another time. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Barry Gifford, uh, Brown Avenue in situ, and I'm a volunteer and board member on South Shore Habitat. Um, and we, one of our biggest challenges is finding affordable land to build on. Because, as you know, uh, many of these towns do not have um, enough affordable housing for people who live and work in that town. And uh, Rich uh, contacted somebody at uh, and we started talking about this. And, um, it's a piece of property that doesn't need a lot of infrastructure uh, to make it affordable. So we identified that as really uh, a plus for that piece of property. And um, so we, we're, we're looking uh, and we cannot find a lot of land that is really affordable from the standpoint of not having a lot of infrastructure costs associated with it. So I, I guess I would say we encourage you to do what you can to, uh, on this piece of property and also on Stockton Road, it does have some infrastructure problems, um, to get these projects moving so that we can we can build homes in the South Shore that are affordable. Thank you. Mr. Murray. Yeah, if I could just address the other gentleman's point there. Um, the neighborhood outreach, you know, absolutely, that's part of one of the reasons that we have these like, meetings televised and the press is here and all that sort of stuff to help get the word out because whether it is something that the entire neighborhood wants or the entire neighborhood doesn't want or it's 50-50 or what have you, the neighborhood needs to be informed and we're committed as a community to making sure things do get um, publicized. So I, I, I agree with you on that. Just pointing out my own personal views about the put it on the market um, model. You know, there are a lot of things in town, and in fact, I would argue that that's part of the role of town government is to, you know, make these tough choices. Is it all about revenue only, or is it, you know, where do we, where do we sacrifice some on the finances in the name of making our town more like the town that we want it to be? And I'm sure everybody here can come up with their own examples, but as you may know, I'm involved a lot with the waterways and the activities going on here in the harbor. And there's two immediate things that come to mind where we sacrifice finances in the name of creating the town and creating opportunities for people that might not be able to otherwise afford it. One is at the public marina, where I personally used to keep my boat, but now I'm on a mooring, so I can say this with some clarity. Um, but we have a public marina that the rates are significantly lower than what the private marinas charge. And the reason for that is so people that don't have the money to afford the big boats and the high expenses can in fact enjoy the harbor, come do business in the harbor without being charged an arm and a leg or two legs um, for the big boats. And the other thing is we look at the commercial fish pier. It would be very easy for this town to put commercial fishing out of, out of business if we just went purely on a revenue model by analogy. No one wants to do that. We could take that town pier and tear it down or, or charge exorbitant rates on that and bring in cruise boats and bring in expensive things like that too, which would certainly be more fiscally responsible, but in my opinion, it wouldn't contribute to create the town that I think we all want to live in. Or maybe I'm in a minority on this. So I, I respect your point and I agree with your point. I understand the numbers of your point. There's, there's no denying the fact that if it goes if we could sell it for 250 or 300 or you know, even I'll grant you 400 when the market turns around or whatever, but that would be money that would be uh, you know, not available to us if we were to put it out for market. So I just happen to disagree with you. I, I, I understand your point completely, but there's a lot, let me finish just for a sec, let me just finish for a sec. But I just think there's a lot of examples where we do this and on my part, you know, I like the idea of Habitat for Humanity, maybe Affordable Housing Trust or something else that we don't know about, but on my part, I'm committed in certain cases, and this is one of them, to, 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 do, um, to go the affordable route on this. Um, now, if it were, and I'm just making an absurd number up to, to make my point, 
there's obviously a, a crossover point, let's say 10 million or 5 million or 1 million, where it does become fiscally irresponsible. And um, I think at the level that we're talking here, my personal view is this is the way I want it to go. I guess my only point was that I sat in that line to get a slip for eight years. Yeah. I think I was the only person from Central to the whole state to sit in that line. So I understand what you're saying about the yeah. town. Yeah. And knowing that the whole state is benefit from that, it's not just the town. Right? Sure. So, yep. And I would argue the same thing with this. The whole state can go anywhere in the state. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fair point. Mr. Norton, just uh, to reiterate, we, we could talk all night long, but the bottom line is we have to find out Absolutely. an opinion from town council. On, on which way to go. And just, if I may, to, to the gentleman from Habitat, you mentioned that uh, you asked the board to to uh, move along the Stockbridge Road project, and I don't quite understand. Is that, is that there's nothing that the town can do? Well, uh, the, uh, there's no uh, hang up on our end, I don't think. The way it stands back, you know, um, we are waiting for the town to tell us what the infrastructure costs are to put uh, power and sewer and um, uh, other utilities up to the house. Oh, so you have a request into the town then? The town is, uh, my understanding is John Hallett has had to go out and get uh, competitive bids for the infrastructure. I understand there's three houses we're talking about that are actually yeah, three plus yeah. and the head of that house. And we were going to share in those costs if they weren't too much. Okay, our independent estimate was that it would make it economically, I don't want to say unviable, but it would create a, a situation where we couldn't really build affordable. I don't think, we, I don't think, and I can I stand corrected if I want, that we have seen any numbers or any requests. Yeah. Al? Did you? Oh, sorry, no. No. I don't think we as a town. Well, we've been told in a meeting by John Howard had to wait for, uh, he had to issue a uh, request for proposals to get the infrastructure for the three houses. Maybe he's, maybe he's waiting for the replies, but we, but we haven't seen anything else. So just a quick question. So what you're saying is the land that we gave you, you may not build on because it may be too expensive to get yeah, you utilities on it? Yeah. The Stockbridge Road? Yeah. There's, there's, it belongs to the Affordable Housing Trust. Oh, right. But, but for all intents and purposes, you have one of the lots. Yes, they've asked us to build a house there. But we're waiting for the bids on the infrastructure. We were just going to, I, I, we expected at, at the time that we would uh, just <coughs> take part of the infrastructure cost. And then John came back to us sometime this summer, I can't remember exactly what it was, and said he'd been told by I don't know whether it was town council or town administrator who needed competitive bids for the infrastructure. Okay. Could, could we get some clarification on that from the town hall at some point on this? Because everybody here is trying to move this forward, but I just get the sense that there's it's, it's talking by each other and just some, something definitive on this because this is something that might hold up another project or might not, or it's something that we've all went out on and voted and supported at town meeting. And I'd just like to get this clarified and move forward one way or the other. Please. I suspect the infrastructure question is uh, you have to pay, someone has to pay to hook up, say, sewer from the house to the street or water from the street to the house. And because you're using public monies, to do that work, or you're using public money to build a house, uh, you have to go out and do competitive bidding to find someone who will build a house competitively, or a drain layer who will install the sewer competitively. Or I, I think that's what that is. I don't know why there's a big issue with it, but uh, how, how, how do we board. handle? I, I'll tell you how. Um, there is a meeting on this Thursday. I'll find out from the Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, what the issue is, and I didn't want to get into it because you know we're here on a property on half on Stockbridge, so I think we're way off, uh, far-fetched, but I can tell you right now, the issue is, is that it's more than just the water and the sewer, it's also the roadway, and you're correct, I forgot your name, um, Very good. Uh, in the back, it's my understanding that Habitat for Humanity is thinking backing out because of the cost for that infrastructure, but I can assure the town, I can assure the audience that the Affordable Housing Trust will have three residences built there with 
town residents, uh, for people who qualify, and whether Habitat for Humanity is going to be a partner with the Affordable Housing Trust, doesn't matter. This town will have three nice homes there. So next meeting or the next time, I'll be happy to address all these issues, and I'll report back to you. Good. Okay. So we will move on. So at this point in time, um, it will not be on the warrant for the special town meeting, and we will get an opinion from town council for any future projects and how we have to proceed with it. Okay. Um, is it seven? Does, does every, can I just interject for a second? Does everybody understand why? Because it's a town property, once you're going to sell it, it has to go to public bidding, which means that both everybody has to be able to uh, bid on it. So uh, this can't be done by just deeding it over to Habitat for Humanity. It has to be done properly through the legal means, and that's the reason why town council has to be involved. I feel bad Mr. Lane just walked out of this meeting um, because, frankly, that's the issue. Now, if it, the property can be deeded over to the Affordable Housing Trust, which is a town uh, trust town's interest for affordable housing and then think about in the future of dealing with open habitat for humanity, providing it's cost effective. Maybe that's the route that we're going to have to do, but we can't just jump in and then assume that it's going to work its way out. We've got to make sure it's done appropriately and properly. So that's the real issue that we're dealing with, folks. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, do you want to... The guy in the back. All right. Yes. Just one quick question and not, not the body, but Just say your name and address. This is Jack McGinnis, Dining News, Dr. Drove. Is the same legal issue with the Stockbridge Road property as that? No. No, it's because, because the, okay. the, the original project that was done on 3A was done many years ago. Right. Then the one we just did at the last town meeting conveyed all the parcels to the Affordable Housing Trust with the understanding that one would be conveyed to Habitat for Humanity. As the Affordable Housing Trust is a public department, that's why we don't have to do a formal thing. This is a separate standalone property now that Habitat wants to come for us. The conveyance that was done many years ago, in my view, was not done properly. So we want to make sure we have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed so that it's properly bid and vetted and we know what we're getting into once we issue the RFP. Thank you. All right, just so I understand, the homework that we need to have, we need to hear back from town council about the process for it. Hadley Road one, and for Stockbridge Road, we need to circle back and find out what's on the infrastructure issue. Yeah. All this other stuff. Yeah. Roads, hookups, whatever. And John will get back to us in a couple yeah. of minutes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And it won't just be for Hadley Road, it'll be for all future. No, I understand that. Yeah, but just the ones before us. Yeah. Thank you. And then still, we have to decide whether we want to actually give that piece of property or not. Correct. Based on Ten other right, because Correct. you they board a sign uh, outside the Affordable Housing Trust would issue an RFP for a specific piece of land Absolutely or right. land. Yep. Okay. So you can start with the warrant. We, we can't, we did up to the street acceptance in 10 minutes. Um, or we could do the, hold on here. All right, why don't we jump right into the warrant and try and get a couple of those done. So we'll do um, um, item number 13. And we'll start with number one. All right, hold on. Let me take a little bit. So these are the, um, this is the warrant for the special town meeting. So on October 24th, we are having a special town meeting at the high school to go over potentially. Um, all of these articles that we'll discuss tonight. I think there's 20. October 25th. 25th. It's 25th. There's almost 20 or a little bit over 20 articles. Um, and what we'll be doing is discussing them tonight to understand them, debate them, and decide whether or not we want to put them on the warrant. Um, and why don't we start with number one? So, Tony, if I can interject, the first yeah. part of that agenda is a financial overview, so you folks have some context for the warrant articles that you're looking at. If we could do that first at your sure. pleasure. That'd be great. So we have. We have um, Mary included a bunch of final reports. This is what we have. 
So, Trisha, do you want to give us a quick overview of? Yeah, I just want to give you a, a, a quick thing. Um, I know traditionally sometimes the town had a special <coughs> town meeting in the fall, sometimes it, it didn't. Really, the purpose of um, a special town meeting is to sort of clean up business that's developed after the close of the prior fiscal year and some things that you know now in the fall that you didn't know in April um, when you approved your town meeting budget, which you essentially started even a year before that. So that's really, um, in the purest sense, why you have a special town meeting. So the articles that you have before you are really to clarify additional information since the annual town meeting, finish some FY11 unpaid bills, things like that, um, and some other things that really um, uh, cannot wait until the annual town meeting the April before. Since the budget is set then, where are the funds coming from for those type of appropriations that we need at this special town meeting? So what I wanted to do, and, and Tony and Mary and I have talked over the past several days, is um, to talk a little bit about the town's financial situation right now to give a little bit of an update because we've had the end of a fiscal year. We're about to set a tax rate in November. And, and what has happened is um, a number of um, positive, I think, results as far as the financial management of the town um, with the financial forecasting and the projections that we make for town meeting. We did have an uptake in local receipts for the period ending June 30th, and we also have a um, fairly significant increase in free cash that's been certified for the year. So those will be the basis of your discussions when you talk about the warrant and we get into the motions probably at the next meeting as to whether or not there's additional raise and appropriate capacity taxation for funding some of these items you're going to discuss about. Um, I have some very definitive uh, recommendations to you about how I, I, I think these budget items should be funded and also um, the free cash and how that should be handled for capital um, operating reserves, stabilization, or what. So um, not to take up a lot of time, I had Mary itemize um, a listing of all the departmental turnbacks that are generating our free cash. You'll see from the chart that I just gave you, it's, as high, it's the highest it's been in the 11 years that that went back. It's $1.5 million from a deficit of $192,000 four years ago. Um, but we also, you know, have needs to replenish our stabilization fund from the December storm and build up our reserves for capital and also have a reserve for FY13. A lot of the money, and I really want to be clear for folks that are watching and uh, listening, is um, over a half a million dollars of that free cash is a one-time revenue source. So that means it uh, uh, came to us either through a foreclosure or an increase in estimated receipts or a one-time surplus that we do not anticipate to get in FY12 or 13. So um, I just really want to be clear of that. I think the board knows I feel very strongly that free cash should not be used for anything other than non-reoccurring expenses. They should not be used for operating so that our budget is always structurally balanced. And what that means is that the revenues we raise meet the expenditures we need, and we're not using or subsidizing other revenues that won't be recurring. Um, but these are all questions um, that you can have in your mind tonight as you review the 23 warrant articles and then um, have a greater sense of when you vote the warrant on the 27th, you have um, then additional time because it's the actual motion that goes to town meeting that will determine the source of funds um, for the ultimate articles. But I will provide recommendations to you uh, for next week of how I think those should play out. But I just for purposes of your discussion tonight, um, you don't need to make those decisions. What you have in terms of the background material and the warrant, Mary's already made some monetary changes to because my math is sometimes off. So um, some of the numbers will change a little bit, but it's nothing significant in terms of your general review that um, changes one way or the other um, the, the stuff before you. So I'll be quiet. And again, you have a lot of paper in front of you, but really it's a great amount of detail to show you where the funds have been generated for them, where the local receipts inside and outside the town are, departmental turnbacks, and um, Mary on the back page has itemized the one-time sources of revenue that we've identified that we will not or do not anticipate to have in FY13, um, so. Um, I want to thank Mary for getting us together on short notice. I saw her last night and, and she pulled it together pretty quickly. Um, and, and really thank Tricia and all the department heads for running the, the town 
effectively and, and um, very financially responsible. Um, this is the highest number of free cash we've had in 11 years. And the only reason we have it is because we're running our town correctly. Um, we know that we have deficits in some of reserves that we should have more on that we'll discuss where this money goes in the future. But this is, frankly, a very good discussion to have because the opposite would be devastating. So in terms of our forecasting, in terms of the way we ran the town in the last year, we've done a good job. And we've gotten lucky with some one-time events that have given us revenue that exceeded our projections. So you know, kudos really goes out to the, the um, uh, town administrator and all of her staff for um, making this possible. Because very rarely in the last 10 years did we have this problem. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so I guess the, the general sense is going into the articles that we talk about that will have a financial impact on the town is that we do have free cash available, that we do have excess taxing capacity in fiscal year 2012, and we do have, I hate to say it because I would never want to suggest it, but we do have $2 million in the stabilization fund, which is extremely underfunded. I think the town administrator is thinking very hard. So, um, so as we look at these, we have a sense of what funds are available. Um, did you have a, I have a question? Yes. So what are we doing tonight? Are we, because I guess there's a meeting next week, and I've heard people say well, we're going to be voting the warrant next week. So are we voting warrant articles tonight that have no financial numbers associated with them, so it doesn't matter whether we vote them now or next week, just to get them out of the way, or are we just discussing these, bringing them up to discuss, and we're going to vote everything next week? Right, because there's What's a couple on? I frankly don't know if you want on or not. So we'll yeah. discuss them all, and if we all agree and the numbers are right, then we'll just vote it. Yes. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the next week's meeting, you know, we had to set up a meeting next week to go over the rest of this stuff because we probably won't decide on all this tonight to wrap up the warrant. And that was a, not a surprise meeting, but one that we hadn't planned on. Is that the only thing on the agenda next week, roughly, plus or minus? That, um, yeah, I guess there's a few others that we're going to tag on, mm -hmm. but that's the primary purpose. So it has to go to the newspaper the next day. Is that going to be here or town hall? Um, it can be here if you like, but it can be a town hall. Mostly, well, I'll talk about it in my report. So okay. it can be, it'll probably be a town hall. Okay. Um, okay, so why don't we start? Why don't we start the, uh, why don't we start the street acceptance? Street acceptance, 745. Right. So it being 745, we'll, we'll now go to item number 10. <laughs> street acceptance, Al Banger. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is a public meeting on uh, three streets that are being proposed for acceptance as public ways. Uh, the property owners along each street have been informed by certified mail at least seven days prior to uh, uh, prior of uh, the board's intention to hold the hearing. Additionally, the meeting was posted in the public place as required by statute. Uh, the three streets being considered are Persimmon Drive and Hickory Lane, which are located off of Tilden in the, in the Wampatuck School area and Beach Tree Farm Road, which is off First Parish, just south of um, Boston Park, Boston County. Um, a moment of background, and I'll turn the floor over to you. On each of these streets, 75% uh, of the property owners petitioned to have their street accepted and agreed uh, to have the town make the specified improvements funded by a betterment ass assessed against their properties. Now, for perspective, on the Persimmon Drive and Hickory Lane area, the cost to bring those streets into compliance is $105,000 uh, divided by 19 residents, bringing that the betterment potentially as high as uh, $5,500 per family, per residence. Beach Tree Farm Road, uh, we're looking at nearly $59,000 worth of improvements needed to bring the street into compliance, divided by the 10 residents, uh, bringing this property to around $5,800 uh, per property in terms of a better. Mass General Law Chapter 80 Section 1 gives you, the Board of Selectmen, the authority to assess the betterments in this manner. I have your uh, layouts of the streets if you'd like to see those. I think we actually saw them. I, I, I mean, if you go through the process, this is coming, we saw this about two meetings ago, and then it went to the Planning Board for their approval, 
and now it's back to us to put it on the warrant and to, for the final stamp of the veteran. Correct. Um, just uh, FYI, as being chair of the board of selectmen, you also get to be chair of the street executives committee. I see Mark Sandin back there, the vice chair. He is on the committee as well, and so is uh, Bill Wimbacher. So we've seen these groups a number of times, and I see the residents uh, in the audience as we've seen them for the last several months. So this is really more of a formality. Um, are there any questions from the board in terms of any of these uh, streets? Do you need oh, a uh, Mr. I'd just be curious to see if the residents had anything to say. Well, that, that's all. I mean, it's, it's, at first it sounded like a real, you know, it's a great thing. They're finally going to get their streets accepted. They get plowed, and there isn't any issue of being a private way. But I don't want to get into a big discussion. These are late model streets, and I can understand what's going on at Walnut Tree. But these late model developments, people buy a home, they shouldn't have to have to pay a benefit to get it accepted as a public way. We, this won't continue to happen, right? I'm not sure it won't. You know, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 all the development obviously fell short of oh. doing something. Well, let me, one second. This, that's exactly what will happen. You know, they bought their houses knowing that it was a private way, and if they want it to become a public way, it's got to come up to the town standards. Right. right. And, and all, yeah, all these people have been here. They've all, you know, at least 75, in most cases, more than 75% of the people have agreed to the betterment. Um, to improve their streets because they want to improve because it's flooding or they don't have a oh, I, 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 I follow that. Yeah. Just, um, so I would say some of the newer developments being built, uh, the, the one that, the, on Elm Street, the builder is building it with an eye towards it will it, to build a public street. I think there was a time in the past where it was the town's position that we don't want to have these developments become public streets. And so a lot of, uh, I, I don't know who, who favored that, the builders or the whatever, but it, in the end, uh, many streets were built not properly wide enough with poor radiuses. Uh, it wasn't uh, necessarily the right inspections done to inspect that that the curbs, uh, the street was paved up to the curb and properly closed and, and, so, and so forth. So I think uh, in today's world, uh, people now are incented to move to become public ways. In the past, they weren't so incented, and so I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. The only thing I'd add before I pass it over to John is, um, of all the meetings that we went to for all of these three areas, not one person, one neighbor came in with a negative comment. Oh, and I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that's great. So, I, you know, yeah. John. Yeah, I, you know, having done this last year and, and the number of streets that were accepted, I just so people understand that generally a lot of the people who do these subdivisions or the contractors or, or uh, developers, they do so and they come in subdivision, they go to the planning board and they try to do a little quid pro quo and they give or take certain things and certain expectations. They don't necessarily have to live up to the full standard for an acceptance of, of a town road. So a lot of these roads were considered private ways. People who bought on, into these subdivisions didn't realize that and they're the ones who were impacted by it now. The person who should have paid for it should have been the developers. Um, and, you know, again, I'm not parsing blame here on anybody certainly not the town, um, because they negotiate with the planning board and make those determinations. So the people who are paying for it now, I feel bad because they didn't realize that. As far as the inspections that you mentioned now, there's absolutely no excuse if, if the town failed to inspect to ensure that based on the conditions put forward by the planning board for any type of subdivision, they weren't met. That's the town's mistake. The town needs to make sure they do a better job. And I know they have been, but I know in the past they didn't. Maybe some of these subdivisions go back 10 years and, and prior. So, um, these people are fixing those problems. There's a little, again, negotiation going on because you're right. This, this the, uh, I would say the dimensions of the roadway or the curves of the roadway. Uh, the town is negotiating with those people saying, we're not going to mandate that you have to fix it pursuant to, you know, a public road, but what we'll do is we'll make it work for you and make it work for us so that you become a part of our, our roadway system. So I think the mechanism both the DPW has put in play uh, with the, um, Street acceptance committee is, is excellent. I'm glad people are getting involved. And um, you know, these numbers, while they are certainly uh, large numbers for a family or a household to have to pay, it certainly beats a number like 20,000 or 30,000, like some of these other sub streets that have come in that say it's too cost prohibitive. So you know, I commend you. I commend the people for doing it. I know it's not fair. I know we had to explain that a number of times last year. Um, but obviously, it was the developers who were able to kind of get away with not having to pay, and that's where they got their profit. So that's kind of really
of the story shown in Book of Honor. Um, I'm going to ask you about, yes, sir, if you can stand up and say your name and address. Yeah, John McCallum, Hickory Lane. <coughs> Actually, John just stated what I was going to say to John's point. When we purchased our property, we didn't really know that it was a pathway. So it was never stated to us, and we discovered it. And so, you know, for our community, we're, we're agreed to do whatever it takes. But I just want to be real clear that it was never conveyed to us that it was a pathway when we purchased that. And we're finding a lot of that as right. we go to the Yes, Anne. Anne Burbine, 10th Penny Chris Road, as a past member of the planning board. I do take a little bit of exception. Um, I was involved with East Street was, uh, that's the one from tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. on. Yeah. Um, I came on after pushing the face. They were gone. That were put aside for the developers. People bought these houses in good faith. And the planning board did its due diligence in terms of what these developers had to do in terms of their performances. One of the issues that we ran into, unfortunately, and, and I was fortunate that this changed, there was no enforcement. There was no enforcement. If a road did not come up to, and we used to do a go around every single year with Paul Scott. We went to Blossom Lane, we went to Christian State, we went to Laurelwood, we went to all these different developments and the laundry list of what needed to be done. Where, where was, where is the surety? Where is the bond that these developers had to put forward their letters of surety? I know that with um, Walnut Tree Hill, there was a million, at least a million. <coughs> I, I feel very badly for these people that they have to pay for this. Yeah, I don't mean to cut you off, but I really don't want to go backwards. And, but you know, I think nowadays there's bonds there and unfortunately it's really out of, the, out of the town's control. I mean, it's not the town's responsibility. Um, although we are helping in some, in any instance here. So, any other comments? Unless there's comments from the uh, residents, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Do you need a separate motion for each road as was suggested? Yes. Or? I think you do. Do you? So how about the first one for, for Simmon Drive? Move the Board of Select the vote uh, to order the layout of the cement drive as a public way and way said way bounded and described in the course of description and plan to be filed with the Council of the Town Clerk at least 10 days prior to the special time. Meeting. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Next one. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to order a layout of Hickory Lane public way, said, uh, said way bounded and described in accordance with the description and plan to be filed at the Office of Town Clerk at least 10 days prior to the special town meeting. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. And lastly, Sean? Move the board of select. Go ahead, Sean. Move the board of select vote to order a layout of each tree farm road as a public way. Said way bounded and described in accordance with the description and plan to be filed in the Office of Town Clerk at least 10 days prior to the special town meeting. Second. Second by Stanley. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. It's unanimous. Thank you, Al. And uh, thank you, residents, for being patient through this process. Okay, now we will get to item number 13. Um, um, the warrant. Is there anyone from the Knights here? No, well, if they're here, I'd do that first and let her go. Um, no one from the night. Actually, why don't we just do number 15 real quick. Number 15 is um, an announcement of the Tootsie Roll Drive. Who's the clerk? Mr. Righty. Looking forward to this one. Mr. Barry. Whereas the Board of Selectmen would like to recognize a very worthy fundraising event sponsored by the local Situate Council of the Knights of Columbus, and whereas this campaign will be conducted from Friday, October 14th to Sunday, October 16th, 2011, via their well-known Tootsie Roll Drive, which will benefit the physically challenged and learning disabled in various communities throughout our Commonwealth. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the entire town of Situate and its Board of Selectmen thank the Knights of Columbus for their continued dedication to charitable organizations and hereby proclaim October 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2011, 
as Knights of Columbus Days for the Physically Challenged and Learning Disabled, and urge all the citizens of Situate to participate in this important event. Signed by the Town of Situate, the Board of Selectmen, Anthony Vignani, Chairman, Sean Harris, John Danahy, Richard Murray, and Joseph Moore. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Now we'll get to the good stuff. Um, number 13, we'll start with the first article. And this is one of the numbers that I think you're referring to that changed. So this is, um, I guess the best way we'll do it, we'll run through them one at a time. And then if Tricia or Mary can answer any questions, if we feel comfortable voting for it, and, and Tricia, if you think it's in its final format, then we can just um, vote it. If not, then we can postpone it until next week. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was Mary. Um, I think so, but in t terms of some of the number ones, I would like to double check with sure. her. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want, we can postpone. So this first article is for um, prior year unpaid bills for fiscal year 2011 in the amount of $3,613. There's $1,000 for a grader, um, $2,160 for stump grinding, and a medical, a medical bill in the fire department for $453. That one's okay. Anyone have any questions on that? Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions from the audience? Okay. Um, number two. This is um, to see if the town will vote to transfer from Bell Funds Treasury the sum of $400,000 for a greater or lesser sum for the purpose of replenishing the stabilization fund for the storm related costs of December 2010. Uh, in the amount of $168,000 and further appropriate $232,000 for additional reserves. So essentially we spent about $168,000 from the stabilization fund for the repair work of the storm and we're looking to replenish that and put another $200,000 <coughs> into the um, stabilization fund. Um, and this is one, why don't we hold this because we haven't figured out where what source of revenue we're going to put this from. I guess the discussion would be, okay. in my in my opinion, the 168 is a no-brainer, and then the 232, uh, as we digest our financial picture, we can decide how much additional we want to put to the stabilization fund. Talk about it next week. Move to hold. Move to hold. No other questions for Trish? Okay. Uh, number three. Um, we want to uh, amend the budget. Do you want me to just read the article? Is that the best way to do it? Yes, probably. Okay. Except is the explanation for three right? <laughs> yeah, the explanation <laughs> for three, yeah, is. Right. Well, I'll, sure. essentially, uh, this is to amend the warrant by $85,000 to um, uh, for the school department because of a, uh, a difference in the cost of, for the Wampadup repairs in terms of what we had initially allocated and where those funds were coming from and where they are now. So it needs an additional $85,000 um, to uh, do that repair work that wasn't in the budget. That's and Article no, no, 4. That's, that's Oops, I'm sorry. So Article 3, and I'll, I'll try and then Mary can jump in. Um, when the school budget was approved, there was an anticipated revenue for legacy funds from MSBA reimbursement. And that full amount didn't come in. We are going to get it, but we're going to get it at the back end instead of having them available. So in a lot of ways, it's just a housekeeping item to make sure the school budget is the right number with the available revenues they have. And then when that's an actual receivable that comes in after Wampatuck's been cleared and audited, you know, that money will come into the town. So mm -hmm. it's really just, it's a lot it's of words to just a housekeeping thing. Are it doesn't materially affect any. Are these numbers well, finalized? But, but, but this article is affected in, in how it's worded and as to whether you're going to, it's, it's a net of 81000 that we that we're off. And it's either reduce the school budget by that eighty one or or raise it from his taxation. Right. It's a different from right. yeah. right. uh, so numbers. Yes, would you suggest that we hold it or, or vote it? I mean, no, I would hold it. I think the better course of action is to do it as a raise and appropriate. But I mean, if we want to decide where are all these pockets of money going to distribute next week, then we can do that. I would not, I'm not suggesting, and that's why I characterized it in my mind as a housekeeping item 
to just capture it under the raise and appropriate and not right. reduce right. the school budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, so Paul, as I understand, it's a timing difference in yeah. terms of when we're gonna get money from the state. Mm -hmm. We can either reduce the school's budget by $81,000 or fund it from one of those sources. Right. And that'll come in the general fund out. Yeah. And then when we get that money back, it'll just refund yeah. that. Mm -hmm. okay. I would, for the discussion, I would vote not to reduce the school budget and to um, fund it and let yeah, it be Yeah, leave it at every appropriate time. Are we that? Yep, sounds good. Okay. Great, so we just have to figure out what bucket of money we're going to take it from next week. Well, actually, we will leave it as written, and it will just come from taxation. Well, we'll figure that out. Um, the next one is the one that I had discussed before, which was the $85,000 um, shortfall in the Wonk Duck project due to the fact of the, the source of revenue was different than what we expected to be there. So we need to appropriate $85,000 to finish that project. Um, again, we don't know what bucket we're going to take it from. The board doesn't. I can't recommend, but we can save that. I mean, I think this, again, should be a raise and appropriate um, because now, we have additional Now, when she says raise and appropriate, that's coming from the fiscal year 2012 money that we have exceeded our projection. Right. We have additional capacity because our local receipts came up in high. But this, this isn't free cash from no. any, anything coming from 2011. This is excess in right. 2012. So we're doing it next week. And yeah, but you guys have any questions on it? Or you get it. All right. Move to number five. Um, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate bond transfer available funds to join in, in the summary of the amount of thirty-five thousand dollars for the purpose of funding <coughs> increased costs for the purchase of a new ambulance for the fire department. Uh, this was passed in April 11, 2011, town meeting. God bless you. So the um, fire department. Uh, ambulance, they have an opportunity to get one that is a, a higher quality with more functionality that they need um, for an additional $35,000. This item was approved in the capital plan last year, went through the whole process of the capital plan, and um, <coughs> the indication is by spending this extra $35,000 on this ambulance, as opposed to one that's $35,000 cheaper, that it will last several years longer. Is that accurate? Yes. Any questions? The only question I had was, and maybe this wasn't discussed when the Chief Judge was here last time, but I thought we talked about that. I know it's, I thought they were saying that, um, truck, I'm assuming it's the chassis, they give up a larger truck chassis as opposed it's to the aluminum band. chassis. Um, but, um, but maybe, maybe, I probably discussed it the last time. It makes sense, because uh, it means it's going to save seven years longer, potentially useful life. But, but I, I thought that's what was part of the whole and you can have them in if you want on the 27th. Well, I, mean, I, I trust you. Your Vermont background is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm in favor of a better ambulance. Can this get over the bridge? And back and forth, back I'll, I'll vote for this. It's on cable TV. I'll vote for it. Just, just only raising because I thought we talked about it. Are these numbers? Good, are they going to change? For yeah, no, we don't know what bucket we're going to take it from. Well, so. this one is capital, so free cash. It's no one time non recurring would be my recommendation. Um, and it's 45, I believe, Mary, right? Or did I do my math wrong? I'll have to check you because you had originally thought we only appropriated yeah. 165, no. but okay. we had 175. So it's 35,000 is a good number. I'll move to uh, approve or accept our five. Second. My only question there is where do you want to take it? Free, free cash? cash. It's a free cash. Okay. Uh, second, uh, we have to do a motion on all this, or what are we doing? He just said move to support Article 5. Just move to support it. Right. I'll give you the and final one. All in favor? And I second it. Aye. 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 Good. Aye. Good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Number six, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrowed transfer from all funds and treasury to sum of $20,000 into the Veterans Personnel Services for the purpose of fully funding this account for the remainder of 2012. Um, as you all know, the state passed a law that towns of our size need a full-time veterans agent, and these are the funds necessary to pay for that position. Um, we are talking with a couple of the towns, I think it's Hingham and Marshfield, yep. to do some sort of collaboration, but at this point in time, in order to be legal, we need to get a full-time one for the town of Citrus. Is that right? Yes. Okay. We'll just pull out the second. Okay. So this would come from raising appropriations? Yes. 
That would be what my recommendation. Like? Yep, Top part of the town. Now we can change any of these at the next meeting. You, you can want. change them up to the night on the floor okay. with the motion. Um, you will, you'll get the motions in October. So it's really, I, I can write the warrant so that it gives you maximum flexibility, but Mary and I need to know the pockets at some point to, to be able to write the information for the, the stuff the advisory committee needs. Okay, so we all support number six. Um, number seven. Um, vote to transfer $32,360 from the golf course retained earnings to the golf course enterprise fund for the purpose of uh, balancing the estimated revenues for 2012. So, it seems like the golf course lost money and they need to use a retained earnings to make the revenue hit with the expenses. So, Mary, help me if I'm wrong. This is for 2012. Yeah. So you have to estimate it by using 2011 expenses. Yeah. And they, they deficit, yeah. exceeded what we had projected for revenue for 2012. They did not take in the revenue they needed actually for 2011. But that's not what this is. For. That is not what this is. But so then what we projected for 2012 Correct. now is not enough. Either. Now, does this bring the retained earnings to? Yeah. Zero. Zero. And does this make it flush or close? It both? depends on, they meet their revenue projection next year, yes, they'll be well, what, still at zero. It'll be a combination of both. It will yeah. be reduced expenditures in his budget that's approved now. Mr. Murray? I'm just going to ask that. What happens if the retained earnings is down to zero? Okay. Yeah, if you end up next, if, if the close of 12, if there's a retained earnings deficit, it will have to be raised. It has to be made up by the town budget. Or somehow increased the golf revenue, which and that's true for any enterprise well, fund. I understand. And we've done that. I understand. That will be paid off by fiscal 2017. Move Article 7. Second. So this is just in the enterprise fund. This has no cash. It's no. moving it from retained earnings to the budget. Mm -hmm. oh, all those supporting? Aye. 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 Number eight. Um, to uh, raise the amount of $57,000 for the school uh, department budget for fiscal year 2012. And this is uh, ended up to reconcile the uh, budget revenues pursuant to the beach sticker revolving fund. So we discussed this last year. We've discussed this, Mr. Chairman, in the past. I move to support. A second. And this will come from the tax Free cash. Free no, cash. Oh, it's, it's a one the town time. side's responsibility to make it reconcile, so it will come from free cash. Okay. That's our dime, so yeah. we'll do it that way. I'll second that. Great. Well, we all support it? Yes. Great. Move aye. on. Aye. 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 Uh, to see if the, uh, uh, to raise $450,000 in the Water Enterprise Fund for the purpose of uh, replacing the mains on Surfside Road in conjunction with the Musquasha Pond Sewer Project. So this is, now correct me if I'm wrong, we're tearing <coughs> up the road already down there. We've got bad water pipes, and this is an opportunity to save money by doing it all at once. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then this gets reimbursed by the veteran? No. This is not the this water. The squat pond only does that portion. Water. Water Enterprise will pay for it, but it will be done concurrently with yes. the sewer from the Is this on their capital? If you remember in the past, we would General appropriate $1.2 million dollars a year for water gotcha. pipe replacement based upon raising the rates by 5%. In the last capital goal round, we did not appropriate $1.25 million. We appropriated $250,000. Now, so we cut back on water main replacement. We've been able to find enough water main replacement money to replace the main mains on Hadley and Gannett uh, in anticipation that if the water department, in fact, uh, was able to end up well into the black, we could take from earnings the money to pay for the additional pipes. That, is, that, that strategy has panned out. The water department has come into, into the black by around a million dollars for fiscal year two, FY11 because of reduced expenses and, and better revenues. The result is we have the money available to then replace these mains, which have broken three times since June. So are we taking the money from retained earnings? From, uh, well, I don't know. You what's the well, you can either borrow or retained earnings. I wouldn't borrow, I'd just take it, but, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have reserves. We have, res we have, uh, we're, you know. The certified retainer is one million one hundred forty-five thousand. So time, time out. The reason that that's not 
in your backup material is I still don't have a definitive number yet. Once I have that number, which is very so by 100,000 twice, <laughs> then we can decide and recommend. Okay, so, we're hold so we'll do a hold. So conceptually, do we agree to yeah. take yes. the money from within the enterprise fund? To do that? So if I may, just one question or comment, I guess, Al. Can we expect, uh, it seems over the past couple of years, that every time we've opened up a road, uh, we found bad water pipes. Uh, that's probably not a yes. shock, but is that something that we're going to do? I mean, is that going to continue, do you think? Yes, I mean, you would think that uh, the mined area, uh, you know, the Surfside Road, which seems to be all new homes, would have uh, relatively more recent water pipes. Those pipes were put in in 1906. So those pipes are well over 100 years old, so that's why those pipes have failed. What we worked on first is replacing the mains that will improve distribution to all of the neighborhoods, the main, the main mains, if you will. But now we're finding that these subsidiary mains are all needing to be replaced. So I would say you should expect that the town will need to, con the water enterprise will need to continually invest in replacing pipes as a program, just as you would maintaining your home or program. Thank you. Huh? And Joe's question is, whenever we do some sort of sewer project, we can yes. probably expect a water project. And that's on how scale. we're trying to project Most likely, out but the it on, Yeah, it would depend on where the next sewer project is. Yeah. Okay, number 10 is to see if we'll raise $43,000 um, to um, establish a... Uh, is that right? Yep, yep, sure. yep, the facilities manager. Um, uh, for the purpose of oversight the management of the town properties and the remainder of fiscal year 2012. So we talked about this at a prior meeting. Um, we all agreed that we need a facilities manager to manage the, how many buildings was it? 50, 50, uh, 55, 55 buildings. Um, and um, this is how we're going to fund it. Where do you suggest? Uh, my initial thought is raise an appropriate if we have the additional capacity because um, and I just wanted, this is an out of cycle a little bit because um, I anticipated it in the FY13 budget. Uh, and, and not to disparage Al at all, but he was much more efficient than I anticipated he would be. So the ESCO is that much further ahead and the solar array is that much further ahead that I need a body sooner than later. Otherwise you would see this at the annual. But I need a body, you know, between town meeting the end of October, doing a recruitment or search and getting someone to start, you're looking at January already, and the turbine comes online in January. Move to support. Second. Um, yes, I support as well. We can talk about what bucket at a later time. Um, you guys? I'm off. Yes, yeah, support. Strong, strong vote. vote. I thought, are we really voting these? Okay. We'll vote them all. I mean, if we all support them, we'll probably just vote them all next week. Yeah. Because uh -huh. right. we haven't really formally done that. Right. Um, number 11 um, is the uh, town raising $78,000 to retrofit the um, police department for a combined public safety emergency response distracting services. So we need to do construction to the police station so that we can get the fire and the police dispatch under one roof. That is correct. Makes sense. Any questions? Okay, and this will probably come from free cash at the one time. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, we all support that. No questions. Um, article number 12, a non financial one, uh, to see if the town um, will enact legislation allowing the current police chief, Brian E. Stewart, to remain in said position subject to satisfactory physical exam until reaching the age of 66, notwithstanding any provision, otherwise you're finding to retire at 65. So state law says that if you're a police chief and you're over 65 years old, you have to go to town meeting and get approval um, to be a police chief when you're 66. And the board unanimously supported him at our last meeting. Any questions? Support it? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Number 13 long to read. Um, so you're using the cheat sheet. I'm looking at, I think, the uh, advisory. The advisory uh, oh, you got the just basically establishing the volume. Oh, right, right, right. right, right. So when the solar array and the um, wind turbine come in place, we're going to be getting money from the utilities. 
and this is going to be the revolving fund that that money will go into so that we can then allocate the funds for the one. Um, or again, this is just creating a revolving fund. Thank you, John. Any questions on that? Okay, number um, 14. This is um, a bullet. It's part of, uh, why don't I read this one? Part of the, uh, this is uh, adopting a new bylaw permitting Massachusetts law, chapter 40, section NC, for the purpose of making improvements and accessing betterments to private ways or take other action. So essentially the state passed a law that we're going to incorporate into our laws that allows people <coughs> to do betterments on a private way and keep them a private way. So the town would be involved in terms of making sure the project is up to qualifications, um, I think getting the contracts in place and getting the work done, all the payment would come through the betterment so the users on that street, but they would still remain a private way. Is that? And uh, we would manage this in the same way as we manage the street acceptance process, whereby uh, uh, people on a private way would petition to have this uh, take place. Uh, there would be uh, some meetings on it. Uh, there would be an establishment of understanding what the cost would be for the uh, uh, members of that private way, an agreement by the members of the private way, and then uh, proceed on that basis. So it would parallel the public way process and enable people to remain a private way where it's not feasible that their street could become public, but they want some maintenance done to it. I think you might have just answered it in the, the last sentence, but what, my question was going to be, why would a, a neighborhood spend money to improve their private way, bring it up to standard, and not have it accepted as a public way? There are many streets and situations that could not become, would never be able to be paved, for instance. Uh, take Pummel Rock. Okay. It, say the old mouth subdivision yeah. area. Those people have come, have, 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 we've had extensive discussions with them <coughs> about if they, if they were to go a public way, what would it mean in terms of how the street is handled? Or if they say the private way, what would it mean? Uh, and they, they actually have come back and said they prefer that it remain a private way because they have more control over traffic through their neighborhood, et cetera. Yeah. However, they don't have the means. It's, it's very cumbersome for them to maintain it themselves. They don't have a homeowners association, say. And so what we've extended is the hand saying, OK, we can help you with that. Uh, we, it also is difficult for them to go collect from neighbors to get money to do the grading. So this would be a chance for them to have the town do that at their request and collect the money, and, and they pay it. Thank you. It's a service that the town is providing to them. You amortize it over X number of years so that right. they can. Like, any questions? All support? Yep. Yes. Okay, number 15. This one we discussed a couple meetings ago. This is to accept a gift from the North uh, Citrus Beach Association for the parcel of land referred to as Minor Beach. Um, we will take on the responsibilities of ownership and maintenance. So this is from the low water to the high water mark on uh, Minot Beach. Now, we were under agreement with them for the last 50 years um, under some sort of lease, and now we are um, going to actually accept it as a gift. Right, I just got this from Jim Toomey. There are a couple folks here from the North Minot Beach Association who might have questions, but this is what Jim gave me earlier this evening. Um, the eminent domain, I really want to underscore, it's not um, to ensure that we're going to take it or any way. It would be a friendly taking, but it just covers all aspects in case there is a clear title. So that's why he included that. So um, he wanted to make sure I explained that because when folks see the word eminent domain, they sort of panic. So I'll read it. It says, the town authorized the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift or eminent domain the parcel of land known as Minot Beach shown on Blah, 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 on not blah, blah, blah. Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. The Minot Beach Association uh, recognized this problem a while ago, uh, that the lease was up. Uh, they came to us. Uh, they did a lot of work, research work, etc. in order for this to happen tonight. So I, I, I think the town owes them a, a, a thank you. For, first of all, recognizing it, and second of all, making this gift to the town. 
Any other comments? Or? I, I have to concur with Joe. I mean, it's, it's, it's a treasure to be able to get um, limited uh, property or land that's on the coast. And uh, I realize it's between the high and the low means, but I mean, that's something that they don't have to do and they own it. And uh, it's an asset for the town, it's an asset as well as for our residents. And, and we can only thank them for doing just that. Great. Everyone support that one? Absolutely. Great. Number 16. Sort of discussed that one already. Yeah, this one that we I think this one was decided Have we to get the town council opinion on, so that'll be scratched. Number 17. Um, it's an adoption of a new zoning map. The map that we have right now is inaccurate. And what they're doing is they're saying the map from 1974, which is actually correct, but it hasn't been updated due to the recent zoning changes. Uh, so planning board is saying, let's get a new map, starting the, using the 1974 map as the baseline, and then making all the correct revisions on the new map. So that's really what it is. So it's actually accepting the new map, okay? Correct. Any questions? Sounds good. Anyone support? Yes. Okay. Number 18, um, this is uh, for the time to amend the zoning bylaw by adding the following language. And this is one that we tried to pass at the annual town meeting, but the uh, Attorney General's office kicked it back and said the wording was wrong, so we're gonna try it again. Um, it will say signs for candidates who win state all primary elections for the all state um, may remain up until three days after the full general election or take any other action relative there too. So this is their language and this is we we'll make that work. Any questions? Everyone support? Fine with me. That wording looks really weird. The yeah. word all is. I think it's just double, double, Someone just double check that before we get to town meeting because we don't want to have the attorney general kick that back again. Is it supposed to be on the other side of yeah, Wendy Allstate? Yeah. But it, you never know. Right. Someone check that. Someone far smarter than me. Number 18, Okay, number 19. Um, so number 19, 20, and 21 are the official acceptances of Persimmon Drive, Hickory Lane, and Beach Tree Farm Road Lane. Sound good. All, no questions, all support. Um, number, <coughs> number 22 um, and number 23. So these are um, two others that we're taking under consideration. The first one is number uh, 22, and this is for the purchase of a, a special ed van for the school department in the amount of $28,000. Um, I spoke with um, Bill Johnson, Paul Donovan, and Dottie Cook today about this van. Um, the, I'll say my two cents and you guys can shoot you in. Um, for capital projects, we, we've set up an intense and very comprehensive plan that all capital projects need to go through so that they are looked at properly, um, you know, amortized properly, and, and really looked at in terms of the big picture. So um, in most cases, I'll even say in all cases, or well, in most cases, we're not going to allow capital projects to be passed at special town meetings if they did not go through this course of action. Um, although after speaking to the three people that I just mentioned, and I see Mike Hayes out there nodding his head, this is somewhat of an emergency situation. Um, one of the vans that they had did not pass inspection and had 150,000 miles on it. And now we are using other vans with a lot of miles to do, do work and we don't have a backup van. So it's my belief and, and Sean's belief that this is, this is one of those situations where we need to get this funded as quickly as possible. Um, and what I would like to suggest that we do is that we take this fund, we're not we won't put it through this process and we won't um, put it on the warrant, but what this type of thing is, is this is an emergency situation and that this is exactly what the reserve fund is there for. Um, and there is $90,000 in the reserve fund and what I would recommend and try and get the support from all of you is that we suggest that this money come from the reserve fund, it could be available right away and um, it would um, be in the, really the proper basket of where things should come from of this nature. Um, 
So you're saying, Mr. Chair, it does not need to go before the special town meeting as an article since it's going to reserve fund? Not if we vote to approve it and then the advisory board votes to approve it, then it doesn't. If either of those don't pass, then we would reconsider whether it will go on the warrant. So are we going to make a motion on this now what, um, as a reserve fund? Yes. And, and, we'll and when will advisory board? Tomorrow yeah. night. Okay. So we'd have to and so if the advisory board says no, then we you still have time to come back? That would be for the board to discuss on the 27th before you okay. finalize the warrant. But um, we've really, I think, streamlined the process for which the reserve fund is used for. Um, you had a t departmental turn back of 51000 in the reserve fund last year. It, this is my understanding. It's completely unforeseen and emergency. So you can vote, I think it's 28000 Mike, tonight. And then we, I can bring it before advisory tomorrow night. And if they approve it, it's good to go and can be purchased immediately instead of after October 25th. And then um, if not, you'll just, you'll put it on the warrant, I assume, we'll if that's your pleasure, or reconsider but I think in terms of the financial buckets, that's the appropriate way to do. And then if the reserve fund has an issue before June 30th, we'll have a special before the annual in April anyway. But given that we turned back 50-something thousand last year, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Mr. Harris. I was just going to say, Tony, you said quite well, but just that Don Cook is here. If anyone else has any questions, she's in the back of the room. I had a conversation with her this afternoon. Feel the same way you do. I don't think I've seen Dottie at any meetings there. So when she says that something's an emergency, she's usually right on. Uh, Mr. Hayes. Oh, sorry. Well, the only thing I was going to add is that you know we, we appreciate the fact that the gate is compressed, but uh, and uh, the vans and buses are done with capital plan items. But this is an emergency. And this one van, when we were going through last year's capital plan, we honestly felt we could squeeze one more. I, uh, I'm all in favor of this as a um, reserve fund acquisition. I just want to make sure that, and I'm not questioning all the legitimacy whatsoever, particularly Dottie, you're, you're here, Mike, you said, no doubt about that. I just want to make sure that the word goes out clearly that at least I'm not going to really want to hear about a lot of emergencies coming up from other people. And this is not a loophole that other people, I think, could exploit to try and use get access to some reserve fund money or something. This is a legitimate emergency. I'm greatly impressed with the diligence of the capital planning process that's been brought in in the last year or two. And I really want to stick to that wherever possible. And so I'm going along with this in full support um, because it is truly an emergency for what this is intended. But let's not set a precedent. Okay. Can I have a motion? Um, so, um, how is it? Oh, John, you want to do it? Or? Um, so, this is just a motion that we're making. We're not doing it. So, I'd say move to support uh, transfer from the reserve fund of $28,000 uh, for the express use purchasing a van, special, ed ed edu special education van for the school department. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And, Mike, you'll come back to us if for some reason it doesn't pass? Yeah. One that we're discussing tonight is um, the appropriation from CPC to complete the Granite Path extension. Um, has anyone heard from CPC? The last, you know, this may be something that we have to postpone until next week. I, the last email that I got on, there was some question as to whether they, is anyone from CPC here? You're not on any more time? I'm on Sunday, <laughs> but, but I go to the meeting. I would suggest maybe I heard next week, but I okay. talked to John Bowman on Sunday, and my understanding was they supported it. So if you want, I'd wait. I'd wait. I saw John on Friday, and he said he had that the that voted to support it, not necessarily the quantity, but the concept. Exactly. Okay. That's what needs to get ironed out. I would, before voting this on Tuesday, I would want the dollar value and the concept. <coughs> at least in an email from Bowman communicating the CPC. So you know, let's put a hold on it because I don't have any on the One second, Mr. Harris? Yeah, no, I, I agree with holding it. This, just so we all know, it's for the construction from Hollow Street down to Hathaway. Yeah. Correct? Right. So 
what happened was it was appropriate. We appropriated, I think, three hundred thousand dollars to get us from Hollett all the way down to Adelaide, and now the bid came in at a higher number, a hundred. I thought it was only seventy thousand, but somewhere around a hundred or a hundred plus to get it there because of cost of goods or whatever. Um, they do have some money left over from a prior project that they did under budget, but there's still a deficit of somewhere between fifteen and hundred thousand um, dollars, and that's what they are coming to get it for. So the project has already been passed for a certain amount of money, but the construction of it has exceeded that number. Yes. Uh, the phase one and two has a hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars left over because that phase appropriated. Uh, more money than was needed to do it. The second phase, they granted less money than was required to do it uh, uh, under advice from the people who estimated what the project would cost. The project cannot be done for the $300,000 that was appropriated. It's going to require something on some, something higher. CDC has considered uh, taking money and going higher. One concern is that money may not even then be enough to complete the project, and the DPW would not undertake a project and, and begin the work unless we have sufficient reserve to do the work. So I, I, I think so it kind of determines whether or not the project goes forward. We will not do a project that doesn't get sufficient construction oversight, for instance. Um, and that, that's the concern. And there was an email from DPW that gave the number that they thought it would be with overhead runs and stuff like that. <coughs> yeah. So uh, that's the number that you feel comfortable with. Right. Yeah. All right, so let's hold this one. I'll talk to John and we'll try and get him and probably uh, Barbara Lydon here for the next meeting. Okay. And the last one. Wait, it probably is from the previous panel. Trish, I'm going to let you explain. Sure. That. Um, usually, when the uh, Department of Public Works is doing a road project or a sewer project or a water project, it gets easements at town meeting to do what's necessary to complete the work. Um, as you know, we've been going gangbusters on seawalls and repair, and we have a seawall plan, and we thought we could just get those easements on properties by talking to the owner informally as each project went forward. Um, that's not the case. Uh, we need to do the exact same process as we do for water and sewer. <coughs> so this is a warrant article that town council gave me this evening to get easements for seawalls for access, and you can read the language. So I'd ask um, that this be added to the warrant for your consideration as well. Support. Right. It reads to see if the town will authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift, purchase, or eminent domain, or otherwise, easements for the purpose of accessing, constructing, reconstructing, replacing, and maintaining seawalls along the town's shoreland, or take other action relative thereto. So we passed a lot of money on an override to help start repairing our seawalls, and until we get this done, we can't do it. Well, we actually had an issue with the seawall bid breach. We don't have access to fix that now. Well, oh, I just I don't know. so I thought this would give us access whether the homeowner agrees or not to to get around the other side. Is that what this is to make those repairs? That's so. If we yes. need to get there, we can, and we can either take it or whatever. But um, <coughs> as we're doing more in our seawall repair and whatever, we have to make sure we have access, and we're finding with the repairs we just made that is sometimes prohibitive. So is this would this be a bylaw? Nope, it's just to giving you the ability as the board to, to, to get those easements. It's just easements, it's not the land. It's just right. easements. It's just access to get the cranes in to do yeah. whatever we need to do. Okay, so those are all the ones that we have now. It looks like we supported all of them uh, unanimously. Um, what we'll do over the next week is finalize the numbers and finalize the buckets that we think we're going to take them from. And obviously we can add any other ones that we that come across our you know, that we're considering now. So as of the end of this meeting, we'll close the warrant and then we'll discuss it again, probably open the warrant and close it again next Tuesday night. And on that night, we'll vote them all specifically, is that? Well, you've closed the warrant, so anything that goes on the warrant is what you vote next week. At the end of this meeting tonight, yes. right. so mm -hmm. there's no new articles. Okay, could there be a new article if we open the warning then? If you put it on the agenda for the 27th, yes. Right. But the board can, you as the board, 
it's your warrant. You can do whatever you want. Mostly you're opening and closing the water for outside departments and outside parties. Right. So if you suddenly have to add a warrant next to Or change the wording of something. That is totally within your purview because you're the statutory owner of the warrant. Bless you. Any other questions on the warrant? Thank you for all the work and the backup, everybody. Um, why don't we move on to item number 14, which is the authorization to execute mm -hmm. school project funding agreement. So it's my understanding that we did this last year and authorized the um, chairman of the board of selectmen to sign changes to these projects, but for some sort of technicality, we have to vote it again this year to authorize. Because you're not John. Right. I'm not John. Motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to authorize the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen to execute amendments to the project funding agreement for the Lompatuck Elementary School project. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Get your Great. 14. We did 15. We can do the appointments. Number 16. Move to appoint Shirley Musto to the beautification committee. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Motion. Move to appoint Mr. Chevery. Michael Chevery as a constable. Second. Second by Danny. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It's unanimous. Move on to number 17. The report. Um, just a few quick things and one new item. Um, the first one is fairly straightforward. It's to vote an easement for uh, National Grid to place uh, some poles on 161 Driftway. The motion's there for you. Motion. Move the Board of Selectmen uh, approve the agreement presented by National Grid for the granting of an easement for the placement of poles on town property. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Further discussion? All those in favor? Just a question. Um, and th this might go to the uh, Cole Parkway. Are we waiting for them to do polls? Pull the polls on Cole Parkway for that walkway? Within two weeks. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Can we um, make that, man amend that motion to Has make it contingent on them moving those polls? No. No, I mean, it's not excuse me. I'm, I apologize, Mr. Banger. No, um, Kevin and I, I had a series sure. of exchanges about the delay in that work, and um, when I asked him who I could talk to at National Grid, uh, suddenly he was told it would be done within two weeks. Now, Mr. Bangett might want to add something to that. Yeah, I, I didn't hear exactly what you said. This, this is totally related to the turbine project. Sure. Uh, yeah. That's fine. No, I, I don't mean, want we, to, we need to be pressuring them to get these things on, uh, otherwise that project is on, goes back, gets slowed down. So. In other words, we'd be doing them a favor to delay further when we want the turbine up and going. Yeah, we're not doing that with paper. You obviously see where I'm going. I mean, on the one hand, they're do. delaying us on yeah. one thing, and here we're saying yes on something. That yeah. Any time we have leverage over this yeah. lovely company, I'd like to take it. I agree. Well, this is not the appropriate time, I understand and respect. Well, actually, Rick, that's a nice segue, because uh, that's the next Let's item on the report. The All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. There's your segue now. So uh, the next item on the report, I know you talked about this at length at the last meeting. Um, I... Um, was in the audience and not at the table, so I didn't really get a chance to talk, and I don't want to belabor the discussions, although there continues to be, I think, some discussion w among communities about the value of having an electrical, a local electoral light company versus National Grid. I actually received an email from a resident about that, but, um, you know, I just, uh, there's a couple of people that um, I think really needed to be additionally thanked, um, and Tony, I think you mentioned it, Sheila and Chris of my office just answered dozens and dozens of phone calls and I think did a terrific job and um, Chief Stewart who um, was acting in my stead while I was gone um, did a great job and um, Jim Cantwell continues to be fabulous in terms of ad advocating for the town but I also want to thank Tony um, because Tony did a lot of over above and beyond stuff um, during the storm writing the web blast and trying to get information out and helping arrange for stuff at the school and I don't know if the other board members were aware of that but um, just my personal thanks because I wasn't here. He's dealing with the media too, and and so I just I want to publicly thank you for that because it, it was great. And and we talked too, but um, it was good. Um, 
So, but there's a couple of things I, I want to talk about. I mentioned the report, and I, I want to discuss at some point later, because every time the town has a weather event, and we've had many, many over the last few decades, it's really a report card on, you know, how well we are prepared for emergencies. And I, I think we need to explore doing some things a little differently in terms of an emergency operations center, which we do not have, um, which raises the bigger issue of really the functionality and use of all our public buildings and what are the 21st century needs for buildings that are now 60, 70 years old. And so um, with the central dispatching, I think there's an opportunity um, to talk about those kinds of things for having an emergency operations center, and I will be broaching that with um, Chief Judge. Um, the other issue in terms of national grid, um, I think that's a longer term issue. I think we'll look to the Attorney General to see how that happens. I'm really not inclined at this point to be paying our electricity bills, and certainly not those for the period that the town did not have electricity for six days. Um, I'm gratified by the fact that uh, with the turbine and the solar array, we will be reducing our reliance on um, this, this bureaucracy. But um, again, I just, I, I want to thank the staff for really responding because it's really um, when we matter most. We're public servants and when people need us, um, mm -hmm. we're there to do that. And I, I just want to acknowledge folks. And so the second part of my report talks a little bit about national grid, so um, I don't need to go there. Um, I do want to share with you, there were several things that came to my attention in speaking with Chief Judge and Chief Stewart uh, about restoration, uh, some of the restoration activities taken by national grid um, from a safety aspect. And those are the ones that are of particular concern with me when they restored wires and what they're obligated to do before they re-energize re a, a wiring. So some of those have come to my attention. I'll be sure to convey those to the um, Attorney General of the Department of Public Utilities. Um, as Tony mentioned in the Warren article, we are exploring the potential to establish a, a regional veterans district. Um, we've had conversations with the town of Marshfield and the town of Higham to share services. Um, I think that's a win-win for both communities as regionalization is really something um, that I think we can look to do more of, and this certainly lends itself to that. So I'll keep the board posted on those discussions. And um, the last thing that's not in my report is um, something to muddle on, um, is the wind turbine is going to be up in January. The road is being constructed now, and it needs to have a logo. So Al and I have had some email exchanges about what that should say. And um, I can either share you what, what Al has suggested and what I've suggested and then said, let's ask the board. So um, the turbine, as you know, is over 400 feet. It's going to be very tall and it's going to be a landmark in the harbor. So um, I don't know if you want a preliminary suggest uh, anything it should say. Al had said uh, town of situate or situate wow. wind. I had suggested just simply situate. Um, but I didn't know if you had any uh, input or do we have to have something on it? Is it going on? No. <laughs> uh, if we don't, uh, it, actually we don't own it. Actually we don't own it, so it's uh, it's the owner's choice what to put on it. They graciously asked us if we would like to have our name put on it, or the name of the company is the Situate Wind. Uh, the name of the solar company, by the way, is called Situate Solar. It's kind of nice they use those that common out, but they, they call it Situate. The company is called Situate Wind. Uh, we, could call, we could put on it just the word Situate. We could put on it the word Town of Situate. We could put on it you know, whatever you want. Probably something Where is it simple going? is better. Where is it going? On the wastewater oh, treatment plant. No, it goes on, oh. the, what's called, on the generator part, which is the Something about the size of a Greyhound bus stacked on top of it. Why don't you just do a, uh, a Citroen Euro? You know the SIC, like the Euro, the white ones? You just have that little Euro. And you put SIC why don't we, why we sell the naming rights? And you can sell Euros. You know, yeah, we can say Citroen yeah. Concrete Pipe on it. Sean, any ideas if you were to sell the naming rights to somebody? How about Sean here at SAG? SAG. Well, we don't own it, so I don't think we can sell the naming rights. Seriously. I would, uh, my, my vote on this would be in recognition that 
that logos and mission statements are the death of many organizations, I would I'd just be in favor of an attractively font the word situation. Sean? I just have a question, Al. Any idea how they're going to get the blades to the site? Very, very, very long trucks. No, I know. Are you going to do by water or by Well, uh, it will not come through Situate Harbor. It will have to come by uh, Mass uh, Highway Road, which is not uh, happy about. Uh, it can't uh, come through the harbor because our pier is not strong enough to support the crane necessary to pick these heavy items off the um, barges, which they could bring in. So they looked at that. But they haven't decided for sure yet. That uh, they they hired a logistics company to lay out a route. If you think about it, these things are put in very odd places as well, the top of hills and mountains. So there's a logistics expert on how to do that. I they haven't yet. How long is the blade? One blade? Uh, just, you know, I'm not hold it. A blade is um, I think it's 80 meters long. That's uh, 240 feet. It will not fit around the mountain. <laughs> so, you know, go straight across. Well, it's it's go straight across. Build a temporary road. If they can oh, road. Yeah, they most likely have to build a ramp up over the roadway. Well, that's just going to be a neat thing to see. Are they going to do it? It will be. The in fact, they they do a, they do a bride run of delivery of a blade with a fake blade uh, to uh, in a, in advance to determine where there might be some things they can't engineer and anticipate. <laughs> Just, on, just one one thing that goes along with that, which I hadn't on a visit, but it coincides here, is if you're going to be throwing brush away for the next... October 1st through mid-February. October 1st through mid-February, it's no longer going to be at the current brush spot because that's going to be under construction with a road made for this. So it's going to be back at the transfer station. There'll be areas marked out, delineated out. Have you decided where it's going yet, Al? Yes. Okay. So there'll be a sign that tells you where to go. Um, it will be starting next uh, weekend or this weekend? Uh, starting next Friday. Starting next Friday. Yes. So this September weekend, 30th. go to the current place. After that, go to the transportation. Okay. If that's the administrator's report, move on to other business. Sean? Nope. Joe? Nope. Thank you. Yeah, I got a couple. Just two. We got a letter from John Murphy, the Waterways Commission Chairman, and um, just want to bring it to your attention because it talks about they're either going to be coming before us, they're either going to be coming before us, or, or something about a slight change in the regulations on the mooring waiting list to make it a little more um, accessible for people who might miss some of the updated timing. And, uh, Turns out that basically in 2010 there was some confusion on the dates as to when people could get on the morning list or off the morning list. So what we're building in, or what they're building in, is a um, essentially an appeal period if you don't do your re-up. Whereas before there wasn't a very clearly demarcated appeal period. If you missed your re-up time to keep your name on the list, you were taken off the list. So there's a long discussion about how to still make it very clear so that if you're on the list, stay on the list if you just have a human error and not re-up, you're still able to get back on there. So they're going to come before us at some point to talk about that. And uh, it's, it's a good thing, and I applaud the Waterways Commission for working on that. And then probably, the other thing is... Probably no need from the coming before us now. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> <It's language. laughs> yeah. Then the, um, but then the other thing that came up at our last meeting, which a number of us have been pushing you know, for a while, is uh, you know, continued work on the town pier and continued ways to make things more, um, uh, again, accessible for commercial fishermen and how to use their moorings. There's some discussions going on at the waterways um, about how to uh, do do everything we can to facilitate the commercial industry, people both on, on moorings primarily, but also at the pier itself. And, uh, so there's a couple things waterways is working on, commercial fishing and then overall mooring. Uh, just briefly, you know, I know we voted uh, to show the most on the beautification committee. Um, I was driving down, um, it says Kerry Litchfield to uh, Brook Street, and you see these islands, and if you look at the bottom of uh, Jericho and, um, uh, not Jericho, um, um, I was say it's called Wilson, it's not, um, Beaver Dam, Beaver Dam and also Fine Street, you see what people have done, 
uh, as a part of the beautification committee for the islands. They do a wonderful job. It's not mentioned an awful lot, but I mean, everybody sees it. And at this time of the year, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And of course, they'll cut it back again and we'll start again in the spring. But I just, again, I want to just say you know, thank you to those people. They do great. It's unsung. You know, people don't know who they are, but they do a wonderful job. I, again, I want to thank you. A couple of quick things. Um, one thing, actually, I see the press is still here, I think. Just for me? Yes, sir. Um, I mean, uh, Kevin. Um, this Friday, the Harbor Merchants are having a um, Harbor Shopping Night, where a certain percentage of their sales of, of quite a few stores down in the Harbor are giving, um, I don't know the percentage, I'm guessing 10%, maybe more, of their sales to the school department and to the schools, all six schools in the town. So we'd like to promote that you go out if you've got some shopping to do, early Christmas shopping, uh, birthday shopping or whatever, um, go down and, uh, and do it that night and you'll be helping the town and helping the school um, department. So again, that is uh, Harbor Shopping on Friday night. Um, I mentioned the brush. Um, the other thing, and, and John was with me here and he's kind of let me talk about it, is um, on uh, September 11th, the uh, Situa Cohasset football program had a 9-11 uh, event, and it was it was unbelievable. I mean, it was it really made me proud to want to live in this town that a small town like this pulled together and did such a great celebration. Um, actually, probably not celebration, but recognition of 9-11. Um, the board of Psycho, uh, Robin Sullivan, really put together a wonderful event. It was a great turnout. It was before the football games in the afternoon, and, and many, many people showed up that weren't involved in the football games. Um, the day was beautiful. Um, Phil Mahoney was there, and he was speaking. The fire, the police. Um, Joe Malone was there and gave a great speech. John gave a nice speech. Um, and uh, Nolan Donato sang. Someone from the high school sang. I mean, it was really just a small town, wonderful event. And I really want to thank the people for putting that together. And um, I know everyone that went was really impressed. Um, they unveiled uh, the huge Litchfield flag out on the field. Uh, there were pictures in the Mariner of that. It was really just a great event. Um, one thing that they did give us, a little surprise, um, is they, they gave the town of Situate a pear tree. Um, there was a tree that survived the 9-11 uh, bombings, and it was a pear tree. And in symbolization of that, they gave the town a tree. And John and I accepted it and told them that we find an appropriate place for it to go. So. Um, We'll delegate that to somebody. Um, but it was just a, a great event for a small town, great turnout, great day. And um, like I said, I was really proud of, of the whole event in general. The other person I was going to also mention was Ted Holland. As people heard Sunday morning, uh, Boston's bells were ringing at 9.30 or 9.15. It was Mr. Holland who was actually playing different uh, songs. So uh, it was a very nice touch. Well done. And Tom, Tony gave an excellent speech, too. Uh, So that's all I have. Any other? Uh, Tony, I just have one thing since the, we're here at the Situate Harbor Community Building, a little commercial. All right. um, the town uh, acquired this building for $1.875 million in May of 2010. We have been cleaning it out and refurbishing it since then, and I really want to take a minute to thank Al and his staff because it took a tremendous amount of work to make this building inhabitable. Um, about $50,000 worth of money, but the roof is not leaking, the air conditioning is working, the, it's HP accessible, it's been repainted, and then the plug is that um, it's available for your personal enjoyment and can be rented, and everything uh, you need to know is on the town's website with a downloadable building reservation form. And um, it, we have extensive meeting space here, which I know is at a premium. We've already had a lot of meetings here, I just got an email from the deputy superintendent today to have a meeting here. Um, so I encourage people, um, since as Tony mentioned, we're going to be talking a lot about the future use of this building, to try and come see it. Because I think when folks have in their mind a vision of it as a restaurant, they'll be very, very surprised when they come in and see really what a, a large facility is. So um, I just want to throw that out. And to piggyback on that, the committee. Um, has put together the first uh, report to us. We've got it, and we'll be addressing it in the very near future. Our focus right now has really been on getting the warrant completed, and then, as Tricia mentioned also, we will be getting together and getting feedback from the storm as well shortly after the uh, town meeting. 
quick, were there any correspondences? I don't think so. Um, minutes, acceptance of the minutes? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the meeting minutes of May 25th, September 7th, and December 21st, all of 2010, and August 3rd, 23rd, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain from the ones I wasn't present at, as does John and Joe. Agreed. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're going to move into executive session now. So um, we'll be uh, turning off the phone and asking you to leave. And um, thank you for coming.